so it gave me a very very intelligent perspective about life about purpose about vision and i'm ever grateful for it hallelujah now not everything in your life produces the same effect as far as your destiny is concerned please listen god gave us 24 hours and it's full of several activities that can move us towards destiny but not all of them move us at the same level and not all of them carry the same gravity are we together now it is very important i think one of the the wrong perceptions that our generation has is that we allocate equal time and equal priority and equal interest to everything and anything your time for play is equal to your time of prayer your time of drifting is equal to your time of personal development there must be a system of prioritizing your life please listen very carefully and so i want to show you the three in my opinion and supported by scripture the three most important things in a man's life these three areas i want to show you tonight are worth dying for not everything is worth dying for Hallelujah. There are people who have died for nothing. There are people who have died the death of fools. It is important to know what is worth committing your energy, your time, and your money. Listen, at the end of your life, there are only few things that will make your life count. Believe me when I tell you this. In the maze of several activities clamoring for your attention, you know, the average young man is is like a magnet attracting different things that need your attention in life and i have found out in my little experience and by the privilege of wisdom and mentorship and the word that in the end of your life there are not more than four or five things that are worth living for so in in our busyness our attempt to make money marry have children have god grow ministries expand all of these things are important but a time must come in your life where you have to just shut the door and say what is really important because many of us as i'll be showing you if you don't know what is important you will major on the minors and you will minor on the majors are we together now praise the lord right so very quickly the first and most important priority in any man's life regardless of call regardless of assignment regardless of whatever it is your experience is the first real priority worth dying for worth living for is your relationship with god please write it down your relationship with god is not the first most important thing it is the highest your relationship with god what is the purpose of god in your life please look up you will be surprised how many believers cannot answer this question what is the purpose of god in a man's life many will tell you to make us rich many will tell you to make us succeed you're not wrong but you're not entirely right what exactly is the purpose of god why should bill gates need god why should the leader of a terrorist group need god why should the first class students need god why should a dying man need god why is it that when you stand uh, at the bed of someone about to die you will not tell him remember your real estate have you written your will you just say please have you made your ways right with god and if he gives his life to christ you can stand there and smile while he transcends your relationship with god what is the purpose of god in your life i want to tell you because many believers do not know the purpose and the relevance of god we only know some of the things that he can do but why do i need god 
And if we do not clear up this understanding, it will affect us in the future. Because Africa, look up please, Africa as a continent, because we are startled with our pressure of poverty and the need for relevance and several things, it necessitates our, our religious affiliations. So you find out that when people go out of this region and life is comfortable, they have um, policies that support their well-being, usually they will not need God again. So what is the purpose of God in my life? Is it to make me a man of God? Is it to make me get a job? See, purpose is what gives value to everything in life. No matter what you have and no matter what you do, if it is not supported by purpose, purpose answers the question why. Why God? Is God blessing someone already? I want to give you three reasons why you need God in your life. Remember, we're examining the most important things, the priorities in a man's life. Number one, God is important in your life because it is your relationship with God through Jesus Christ that secures your eternal destiny. God is relevant in a man's life because without a relationship with God, there is no guarantee for your eternal destiny. John chapter 3 from verse 15, you read to 17. John chapter 3, it says that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. Then 16 says, for God, not for angel Michael, not for angel Gabriel, not for the third living creature, for God himself so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have life everlasting. Why do I need God in my life? Because the only security to my eternal destiny is my relationship with God. Please listen to me. There is no educational qualification that crosses the boundary of the earth realm. There is no savvy, business savvy, that sustains the ability to cross the earth realm. It is important for us to understand that our relationship with God is not just a tool for success alone. Primarily, the Bible says if our hope is only in this world, we are of all men most miserable. Listen to me. No matter what you lose in life, if your relationship with God is still intact, you are still a winner. Hear what I'm saying? And no matter what you gain in life, if you lose God in the process, you really lost. The Bible gives us the parable of the rich man, are we Bible students, and Lazarus. That man had a lot of money. That man had so many things. And then he died. Lazarus died in two. They now get to a realm where money does not count. They now get to a realm where education does not count. They now get to a realm where political affiliation is not an advantage. And the Lazarus is sitting at Abraham's bosom. And the man is at the other side. And he's standing, wondering, and crying for a drop of water. That means the purpose was not really to quench the kind of test you think. Are we, are we together now? Please listen to me. Let me tell you this. Your relationship with God is not loyalty to your parents' religion. Your relationship with God is not an affiliation that um, was brought about by your sympathy to Christianity. That you compared many religions and you felt like an award. This is the best. So I go for it. The proposition that we give people sometimes as ministers as to why they should come to God may be very sincere, but it is dangerous. If the only reason why I introduce you to God is because of tea and bread, then you are in trouble. The relevance of God spans this realm. It is very important 
This is God. If our hope is only in this life, whether you like what I'm saying or not, a day will come when your wisdom will be tested. It will not be tested by an exam. It will be tested by a transition. The wise ones are the ones who will still stand whether or not they are in this realm. Listen, this is the reason why we continue to introduce people to Jesus. It's not that we are guilty of, of not being evangelists. No. Your relationship with God. So the first purpose of God in your life is the security of your eternal destiny. Number two, the second reason or the second purpose of God in your life, I hope you understand how I'm, I'm arranging it, is your exploits in life. It is true that you can succeed in life without God, but I guarantee you there will be a vacuum in your success that will make it clear that it's not God that brought you there. I've had the privilege, and I will tell you this, I've had the privilege to be connected to a lot of blessed and influential people. I have seen power, I have seen dimensions of wealth and relevance in the lives of people. But I'm surprised at the vacuum that refuses to be filled by these things. Education, money, prestige, and all of these things. When God lifts you, he leads you in such a way that his face remains intact. Are we together now? Your exploits in life. Daniel 11.32 The Bible says the B part, But the people that do know their God, it says they shall be strong and shall do exploits. Shall do exploits. Your excelling in life depends on your relationship with God. 2 Samuel 22 and verse 30. 2 Samuel 22 and verse 30. 2 Samuel. He says, For by thee I have run to a truth. He says, By my God I have leaped over a wall. Impossible feet based on your connection with God. It is true that our connection with God transcends the relevance that this time brings, but it also makes sense in this life. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. That one with God is truly a majority. When God holds your hands, like the worship team will always think, everything, everything is possible. It is true, when God decides to hold a man's hand, he will walk wonders through your life that will dumbfound principalities and powers. Your life becomes an epistle of wonder after wonder. Why do we need connection with God? Because our exploits in this life depend on it. The wisdom that comes from God, the creativity that comes from God, the anointing that comes from God, I met a family that cried to me and said, Apostle, our lives are in complete shambles. We've heard what God is doing through you. Please, can you pray for us? And I looked at them with joy in my heart because I knew their lives will change. Yes. There is what God can give you that will help you to change men, change cities, change territories. Connection with God is an advantage. And when I talk about God, I talk about the God of the Bible because God means many things to many people. So that there's no confusion, we're talking about the God, the creator of the ends of the earth. When you hold my hand, everything becomes possible. When you hold my hand, impossible. When you hold my hand, everything becomes 
Job situation intimidates you. Don't let the pride of men intimidate you. Just make sure that at all times your hands are on his hands. He says, I have engraved you in the palm of my hands. And step by step, you will watch God lift you level by level. Listen, my life is a testimony of what happens when God holds a man's hand. When you hold God's hands, it's a good thing, but when he holds your hand, when you hold my hand, everything becomes possible. When you A product of the hand of God upon a man. The Bible says, and the hand of God was upon it came upon Elijah. When you do normal and natural things, it's not worthy of commendation because that's what men do. But when your life produces a result that only God can produce, it is proof that you are assisted by a divine hand. You need to strengthen your connection with God. of God in your life as far as earth is concerned. As far as earth is concerned. The third point I give you is that only God can give you true peace and fulfillment. Please write it down. The third reason why you need God in your life is that only your connection with God guarantees peace and fulfillment. Everybody please say peace and fulfillment. Most people, please look up. You see, respectfully speaking, most of us here are... There are very few people here who are already established from all of the indications of establishment. So most of us are on a journey or beginning the journey to establishment and so on and so forth. So you may not value things like peace and fulfillment because you are still trying to make ends meet. There is a level when you get to, you will find out that nothing in life sustains the ability to give you peace. The highest index for measuring wealth is peace. Write it now in advance and thank me decades to come. The highest index for measuring wealth, for measuring um, relevance is peace. The highest measure of wealth and freedom, that's what I wrote here. The highest measure of wealth and freedom is peace. Three scriptures quickly. Romans chapter 5 verse 1. Chapter 5. Therefore, be justified by faith. Koinonia, read on with me. We have peace with God. Hold on, don't rush. Peace with God is different from the peace of God. Peace with God means I have made my way right with God. Peace with God. It's not the same as the peace of God that you have made peace with God. That means when I look at God, I stand with joy knowing that there is no barrier that interrupts fellowship. Peace with God. Peace with God. It says we are justified by faith and now we have peace with God. Most people do not have peace with God. 
we may have money we may have titles and these things are not wrong we may have all of the things that people chase after but when you lack peace with god there is a serious problem because at the end of your life what will give you fulfillment is knowing that my ways are right with god look how the generals that transited in recent times transited red had bonkey knowing that his time was almost there he was with joy and gladness he came to nigeria preached his he knew it was his last message he said it he had raised daniel colenda he had put everything in place and he said eh, i see you when we join the cloud of witnesses to come and pick the rest he waved everybody peace with god these men knew where they were going. they were not hoping no Billy Graham, one of the few people who finished his assignment and remained and were just watching it. You will know a man has finished his assignment. Set up the Billy Graham Institute and when it was time with honor and with joy, he waved his hand. Same thing, tell us. There are people who wake up and say, where am I? They say, you are not on earth again. It's over. It's over. What happened? The last thing I know is that I left one city. I was hard enough to go. It's over. Period. Where is my PA? It doesn't exist here. Where is my certificate? It doesn't exist here. John 14, 27. It's a good Valentine message. Isn't it? John 14, 27. <laughs> Read on with me, Koinonia. Ready? One, two, read. Peace, I live with you. Listen, listen, listen. Jesus is speaking here. Peace, I live with you. Among the many things, he, listen, there are two things the Bible tells us we should expect. One, peace to the Holy Ghost. Peace, I live with you. You need it so much. Forget joy, it will come. But peace, I live with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world gives. It says, Give I unto you, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. That means these two things will remain in your destiny until the peace of God comes to drive them out. Trouble, fear, will remain in your heart until the peace of God comes to build a garrison. A state of restfulness. Look at me. The peace of God is not based on results. The peace of God is a supernatural impartation of that dimension. You can be in the midst of fire, yet you are like the still waters. If you are waiting for everything to be in place for you to have peace, that's how the world gives. But there is the peace of God that in spite of every storm in your life and your family, it is true that you've not paid your rent. It is true that things are, you know, haywire, your academics, your life is true, you've not had a child yet. And people see you and you are completely risky. Because there are few things that are worth dying for. There's the peace that I have In spite of all the sadness that surrounds me And these things in my heart Only comes alive every time I hear Comes and comes to life There are some of you who are doctors here. Look at me. Young people now are depressed over nothing. It's because they have not had this message. You see people wrinkle you guess and say you are 40. Say I just turned 28. What has added your age like that? The trouble that continues to disturb people. I need to make it. I am not teaching you to be irresponsible. But hear me, you will die for nothing. And the world will bury you and keep moving. You need to learn to come to a point where you say, Hey! Shut the door at every trouble and everything. 
and find rest. He leads me beside the sea. Life has a noisy way of depressing you. Left, right, till now you've not gotten a job. Till now you've not married. The child has not come. This has not happened. Today, Valentine, nobody called you again. You see, all those kinds of listening, listen to me. When those things happen, it's amazing. Your BP begins to rise. You know why? You are thinking nonsense. That is not the mind of Christ. And yet you can be completely at peace. Where will my school fees come from? Where will my rent come from? Listen, worry does not solve today's problems. Worry kills today's peace. It kills today's opportunities. It destroys tomorrow's door. So that you cannot even make progress in your life. Jesus took a whole chapter to talk about worry. Listen, this is a very powerful message. Learn peace now. Don't wait till they pay you salary. If your peace depends on your external environment, Satan has mastered you. It means you are about to die fast. Only comes the light. Only time I feel. Not every time I receive an alert. Not every time I receive an award. Not every time I feel I am making progress. The voice of God is my peace. Ah. A state of restfulness. Not irresponsibility. Restfulness. Lord, you are in control. Why will you be awake and I will be awake too? One of us will sleep. You have chosen that you do not sleep nor slumber. So let me try sleep. Many people don't sleep because of all kinds of depression. What is happening to my father? What is happening to my mother? And Satan just adjusts. Hey! Do you know they just said that um, the land that your house was built upon, there's supposed to be a road there. And they're going, ha! What will I do? And you see people say, My soul, find rest. One more time, prophesy. Say, My soul, find rest. This is how champions live. They are, they are shockingly peaceful. Because many times, when there is noise in your life, the voice of God is not there. There can be an earthquake and He's not in it. There can be all kinds of winds. And when all that nonsense is gone, then here He comes. The still small voice. Are we together? Do you know that every time we are troubled, we shall change the power of God from coming to our lives? It is only when you are at rest. Even doctors will tell you when they want to carry out surgical operations on patients and they find out that their BP is vacillating, they will have to say, Look, find a way of stabilizing these people emotionally. Is that true? They gather their family members to crack jokes, they find something that makes them happy. It's been proven that when family members are gathered around sick patients or things they like, they can aid their recovery. I was watching, I think it was day before yesterday or so, on the news when they were showing people in China dancing to ease the whole the coronavirus. And people were just dancing. And if, if it makes them happy, why not? Listen, beware of prolonged depression gloominess when when the peace of God does not find expression in your life death is being ministered to you you are dying already it's not when you are sick and cannot move are we blessed Jesus. second Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 16 now the Lord of peace himself you peace. How long? By all means. You know what by all means means? Whatever it will, it will take God to seek to ensure that you remain the Lord of peace himself. Give you peace always by all means. The Lord be with you all. 
the Lord will give you peace by your means. That is, it is based on his desire to give you peace that he prospers you. If he notices that the, the peace is being interrupted because of poverty, he will switch and attack poverty and take it personal. Not because he is really interested in money. The goal is that you find peace. Please understand this. When God lifts you, when God blesses you, when God wipes your tears, this is what he wants to give you. And he said, by all means, this is why he keeps pumping mysteries upon mysteries. He's giving you all the keys. It is his by all means agenda to make sure that whatever it will take, you do not remain to you. The Lord of peace himself will give you peace always by all means. So your relationship with God, this is the first most important priority in your life. Please do more. Believers, hear me. It matters that you make up your mind now that nothing will ever make me live good in this life. You would think what I'm saying is very simple and very easy. No. Make up your mind. What shall separate us, the Bible says, from the love of God? Then it begins to list many things. For many people, they've not even seen one tenth of those things. And yet they are under the law because they God, I will wave you and will reconsider it when you, are, when you are serious with me. People have left God because of marriage. People have left God because of money. People have left God because of education. People have left God because of all of those things. That you get to a point where you say, Lord, the issue of leaving you is like an initiation. I'm there and there for good. Make up your mind that I'm stuck with you and I'm stuck with you generally. I'm not using you. I am here to stay. And I'm here to stay eternally. Now listen, your relationship with God is worth fighting for. Your relationship with God is worth dying for. Your relationship with God is the highest the noblest pursuit on earth. Fail in every other area of your life and ensure that you are rich towards God. You still want. Did you hear what I said? Yes, sir. There were two men hanging on the tree. They were thieves. And one of them was arguing and talking a lot of nonsense towards Jesus. And the other one, you know, began to call on his mercy. And he said this day, you will be with me in paradise, straight up, because you made a decision to be connected to God. Many people would rather be connected to politicians than God. Rather be connected to this. Now, men are important, but God first. In the beginning, it must remain so. In the beginning, not later in the equation, God. In the beginning. God. God is not an option when all else fails. You say, God, talk. See, there's nowhere to go. Let me just no, no, no. In the beginning and from the beginning, let it be God. From beginning to the end, it will always be, always be you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. I just wanted to sing that prayer from beginning to the end. Alpha Omega. God. Forever. I'm with you for the long run. I'm not with you for 10 years. I'm not. Have you seen people that you meet and say, I used to know you? And they'll tell you, well, those days, FCS or SU or something. Say, now, the reality of life has made us to go. Where did you go to? Jesus looked at the disciples and said, Will you also go? He said, To whom shall we go? No matter what happens in your life, please always make sure that you are on God's side. Guarantee that you are still. Are we blessed? The first priority in a man's life is your relationship with God. Number two, the second most important priority in your life. What dying for, what living for, what sacrificing for is your family. Family is the very important thing in the sight of God. 
family is the very important thing in society. Hallelujah. Family life is very important. The most important unit of society is family. Society is full of all kinds of institutions, religious institutions, judicial institutions, commerce centers for commerce, but the most important unit and institution in any society is family. Someone say family. What is the purpose of family? Why is family important? I will give you two reasons. Number one, your family in most cases will be your greatest support and motivation system. Put it this way, your greatest support and motivation will almost always come from family. Family will generally provide you the greatest support system and the greatest motivation. Why is family important? Because your family, both nuclear and then extended, your family will usually, not in all cases, but in most cases, will be the last place that you can fall back on when all fails. No matter what you become or don't become, you are almost sure that no matter what it is, family will be your greatest support and will be your greatest motivation. Listen, from scripture there is no guarantee that you have indefinite support and motivation anywhere. The strongest support system and the strongest motivation system in your life will almost always, there are very few exceptions, but almost always be family. It was because of family relationship that Joseph looked at his brothers and did not lock them up and looked at them and said, you guys, what you did 12 years, but we are family. Sit down and eat. Family is very, very important. Job, when Job lost almost everything in his life, the last person who was standing with him was not his brother, was not Elihu, was not the other two gentlemen. The Bible says in Job 42 verse 10 that when Job prayed for his friends, so he had friends that were alive. Where were they? He had friends that were alive. But they were not there. But his wife stood. Even though she was talking a lot of nonsense, at least she stood. The person that insults you and stands <laughs> is like flogging a child and saying, I will kill you. And you are still shifting him from the junction. Are we together? Family is very important. Look at me. If you do not understand the power of family, then you will be building catastrophe in your destiny. There is no guarantee that your church, koinonia, job, business, anything will indefinitely guarantee you. When everybody, listen to me, said crucify Jesus, when everything happened, at least when he resurrected, angels came. The Holy Ghost came on the third day to bring him back to life. And where did he go back to? Talk to me. He went and a throne was prepared at the right hand of the Father. And he sat down. Listen, please hear me. Your family is very important. First, your physical family. And then, your spiritual family. Your spiritual family is also family. They are the only ones who have the ability to take your nonsense and still love you. The whole world does not think you are that much of a big deal. Are you getting what I'm saying? Family is very important. Family is very powerful. Your greatest support, your greatest motivation will come from family. Now, this is true. Listen, look up, please. And if you understand this, 
then all of the other things like marriage, relationship, destiny connections now become something you pay attention to. Why? Because you now know that your greatest support is family. You can lose a job, but you, your family remains your family. Even when they say they disown you, it's just a psychological statement. Are we together? Yes. Family is important. And that means that for you to excel in family life, it requires serious preparation. Whether it is relationship, whether it is marriage, anything that has to do with family life. My brothers and my sisters, listen to me very carefully. Family life is a serious issue that requires very serious preparation. The Bible says there is no man intending to build a house, it says, who will not sit down and count the cost. Write this down. The most important key to sustainable relationships and marriage is knowledge. The most important key, there are many other keys, but the most important key to sustainable relationships and marriage is knowledge. Please say knowledge. The most important key to relationships and marriage and family, especially within the context of marriage, is not love. No. Love is important, but more than love knowledge. Broadly speaking, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Proverbs 24. Please give it to us from verse 3 and 4. You will need wisdom, you will need knowledge, you will need understanding. Through wisdom, Proverbs 24 and verse 3 says, a house is built. It says, by understanding it is established. Verse 4. And by knowledge shall the chambers be filled with precious and pleasant riches. Everybody say, I need knowledge. I am convinced. Look at me, please. I am convinced that one of the reasons why family life in many, many circles around the world continues to um, nose die is because we do not pay attention to the knowledge dimension. We only pay attention to the emotional side of marriage. Now, watch this. Do you know the reason why, although there are accidents, they are minimized relative to the number of cars? Because they don't allow you to drive until you go to a driving school. Is that correct? You go to a driving school, you learn how to drive, you are certified by a driving school. It will take a while, they will test you when you go to make your driver's license. Are we together? They check you, they profile you, they make sure that you are doing well, ideally speaking now. And then eventually, they give you the access to drive. But anybody can just pick a lady from anywhere and just go anywhere. If a church rejects you, you go to a garden. If a garden rejects you, you stay at home. And quietly you are married. And because of that, there is a lot of clash of opinions and ideas. This is very important. It's Bishop Oyedeko who will say there is no new generation truth. Truth is truth. Believe me, if all you take to the table of marriage and relationship is love, you will be disappointed. Everything you hate now, you once loved. Knowledge. Knowledge. Marriage in today's world and relationships require more than love. There are many things that need to be put in place. You need to have understanding of who a man is, who a woman is, conflict management systems, leadership, parenting, finances. These are real issues. It doesn't mean you must know everything. 
but there is a level of sufficient preparation. Listen, no level of preparation and investment in marriage becomes a waste. Remember that marriage is for a lifetime. Marriage is not for two years, ten years, fifteen years. Marriage is not for when children come. So no matter what kind of preparation, it is very important. It's God blessing us. Family is very important. When you lose family, you have lost a major thing. You will not die, but you will be greatly affected. You can lose a job and get another one. You can lose money and have it again. You can lose your reputation and build it back. But when you lose family, you lose a lot. Are we together? We must trust God to build families that last. And the key to building families is not the emotional activities of love, love, love here and there. It's more than that. It takes knowledge, wisdom, understanding. Because the challenges that come in family are real issues that are solved only through knowledge. They are not emotional problems alone. And they require knowledge. If you are together with me, say Amen. Hallelujah. For instance, the Bible gives us, you know, in, in all fairness, let, let, me, let, me, let me give you a confession. I, 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 I contemplated a lot whether I would talk about family, you know, and marriage and relationships and all of that. Um, I thought about it, but um, I knew that I owe, I owe you teaching you the truth of God's word number one and then number two it's an uncomfortable truth but let me tell you this the variables in marriage are too many to learn about marriage through opinions the variables every married man will agree that every home is unique and there is no general template based on personal experience. And so we must be able to minimize experiences and focus on the Word of God. Are we together now? Yes. And let me tell you this, and I want to submit to you truly. It is not always true that experience teaches about marriage. It is not always true. Experience is an added advantage. The major mentors in the issue of marriage in the Bible were not married themselves. God, Jesus, Paul. And yet they were the authorities that taught about marriage. This is the thing of the Spirit. Are we together? I've always said a man can dwell with his wife for 30 years, hurting and destroying this dear woman's life. But just because she vowed that she will not divorce, after 30 years, they can use the template of their experience to teach that this is how to remain in marriage. It's wrong. Because the woman may have been quietly enduring pain for 30 years. living and abiding forever. You will never go wrong with this book. Believe me when I tell you this. You will never go wrong with this book. Are we together? It's very important because I'm saying this because there are many young people unmarried who think that there's nothing to learn. Let me just marry and then I will start learning pragmatically. No. No. The preparation for marriage is before. There are foundational truths you should know before. You will continue learning even when you are married. Are we together? But there are truths that are foundational, unbending, and it's important for you to know. Can I just touch on two or three information? Number one, we are discussing family. Look up, please. There is nowhere in the Bible where God tells a woman to love a man. In your Bible. 
God does not instruct women to love men. The Bible tells women wives to respect their husbands because psychologically speaking love does not mean anything to a man but when you honor and respect that man that is his idea of love are we together now all men without reservation please listen to me no matter how emotionally appealing a woman is towards a man if genuine respect and honor is not there, there is a violation of a foundational ordinance. It's a matter of time. There will be a repercussion. The Bible, Jesus himself, spoke a bit about marriage. And then in Ephesians chapter 5, when you read, the Bible says, Wives, submit. Wives, respect. Respect. Now, let me tell you this. Please look up. It is true that honor should be for all men, but there's all kinds of nonsense flowing around society that the concept of equality is being one with Christ. But organically speaking, listen, ladies, please hear me. Organically speaking, the head of every woman is that first one. He is not the head only when he brings food. He is the head as this. God knows what he built. And when he gives you a pattern, maintain it. Are we, are we together now? The Bible clearly tells us, Wives, your interpretation of love to a husband is submission and respect. That means... I hope you know the Bible says he that finds a wife finds a good thing. It didn't say he that finds a woman and makes her a wife. That means there must be a wife to be found. A wife does not happen when you are married. A wife is a mental position. Are we together now? It's, it, this is a very powerful revelation. The Bible, your Bible, look up please ladies. It means that every woman who wants to be successful in her home and every woman who wants to be successful even in a relationship must, before a man comes to your life, the assignment you should be involved with is learning submission and learning respect. Because this is your, this is the mandate upon you to your husband. As Paul began to teach the church, it will be difficult, brothers and sisters, for a woman who truly understands respect and honor and submission to have a bad marriage. It will be difficult. There is something respect does to men. It makes them vulnerable. When a woman respects a man truly, when a woman submits to a man truly and unashamedly, she makes him owe her. He will owe her honor. He will owe her care. But ladies are gradually losing it because the context of modern day society tells you, look, you know, the whole, uh, you stand up for your right and so on and so forth and we are corrupting God's pattern. It's a matter of time. There will be destruction. Hallelujah. Ask anybody who is from 50, 60, 70 years old and above in marriage, they will, because they've gone long enough to tell you, they will tell you sincerely that the strength of a woman is in her submission. Look up. The Bible, two books in the Bible are named after women. Ruth and Esther. Isn't it amazing that the book of Esther is not called Ahasuerus and the book of Ruth is not called Boaz? And the books parallel themselves because the books have to do with number one, weak women, Ruth and Hadassah. Number two, the Bible, that book has to do with great, successful and, and established men, Ahasuerus and Boaz. And in both books, the strength of the women was their weakness. 
Are you getting what I'm saying now? It was the dexterity of Esther's submission, her wisdom, that made her to conquer her man, granted access for the promotion of Mordecai, are we together now? And eventually stopped what would have been the destruction of the Jews. There was no sword that Esther held. Yes, she killed everything. Weakness is greater than strength. Weakness is a weapon. It can do many great things. Ladies, let me tell you this. Make up your mind that you are going to preserve your family by sustaining the unashamedness to sincerely submit to your husband and to respect him. You know what respect means? To respect means to hold in high esteem. To respect means to praise. Are we together now? There is no man who will indefinitely continue to love a woman and a wife. I wrote something here. You may want to write it down. While I was preparing, the Holy Spirit just fired this to my spirit and I said, Wow, this is instructive. Ready? Love in marriage is unconditional. But stability and fulfillment is highly conditional. Love in marriage is unconditional. But stability and fulfillment is highly conditional. The narrative that love, a man continues to love a woman and live with her indefinitely, regardless of what she becomes, regardless of what it, it looks like is true, but there is an aspect of it that is the lie. Because coexistence is based on the principle of compatibility and understanding. Please, you, you have to get this. You can love someone but not want to live with the person again. Are we together now? Yes. Ladies, your biggest advantage in family life is not competing with your husband. Your biggest advantage in family life is not your becoming a CEO or you're becoming a great woman. Your biggest advantage is mastering submission. I read an article one time that was sent. A woman who was married for 80 years. Maybe some of you have seen the article. Married for 80 years. She lived, I think, up to 104 years or so and died. And she wrote an advice for the ladies of this generation. Even me, when I read what she said, I said, Ah, this thing requires the Holy Ghost. The woman wrote what 90% of you here would hear it. And yet she said that was the secret to her home of 80 years. When you want to last, prepare to last very long. Not long, very long. You cannot survive 80 years in marriage by mistake. Are you getting what I'm saying now? And the woman said, according to the article, that she literally was the one running the home. There is something I can tell you about men. I've been one all my life. I will tell you this. Men are vulnerable to honor, to respect, and to submission. Men honor those above them. They lift up those below them. They fight those who claim equality with them. What men do not want is the competition of equality. When you are higher than men, they will gladly respect you. When you are lower than them, they will gladly lift you. But when you claim equality, subconsciously, you bring yourself to a position where you will attract a lot of pain. So you must obtain grace. In the name of Jesus, we want to build homes and family lives that last. And the secret is not in the vastness of information. There are a few essentials that are foundational. Submission. Now, we come from different backgrounds. I'm coming to the men, but ladies, listen to me. We come from different backgrounds that interpret weakness, interpret submission as weakness. The average lady who is submissive today is interpreted as being desperate. 
and interpret they interpret as being desperate you are not showing like you are the very thing that is the honor of a woman is now being perceived as weakness and for the men this one thing I know from scripture and from the experience of people with proven family track records that the real needs of a woman is security and emotional fulfillment. it is true love in one word for a woman is security security and emotional fulfillment security so every man who intends to build a home must sustain the unashamedness to communicate security and to communicate the requisite level of emotional fulfillment that will give the woman psychological strength it will not just happen the first two three four five years of marriage it is a principle that will last i look at my mom today even in her old age and i still see and discern that craving of security and emotional fulfillment hallelujah praise the lord it is dangerous when men get married to women and ill treat them like pieces of rags simply because they are now married she's giving you two three children and then it ends is the reason why people must ask the holy ghost to help them because you see nobody has the power to stay with one person forever you change clothes you change hair you change cars you change jobs you change everything but now you are mandated to stay with one person for the rest of your life it's not natural so there will have to be a grace that continues to keep that person fresh before you regardless of the reality of advancement in age and life and time and so on and so forth are we together now yes i've always given this example when you see a man of say 60 years or 70 years on a wheelchair shaking because he's sick and the wife is standing by him and saying my husband at that point is no longer emotions there has to be a grace from god that makes that woman to still love because nobody that scenario by default is not pleasant women need security they need emotional fulfillment that means what men should do is not just to look for wives they should understand that if i commit myself to marriage i'm committing myself to providing security providing emotional fulfillment it is true that when men provide security and emotional fulfillment they provide for the women the fuel that drives them to be supportive that drives them to give their best and their all towards the central purpose of that home gentlemen listen to me we must make up our minds that in the name of jesus all of the responsibility that we need to submit ourselves to that make for providing security and providing the requisite level of emotional fulfillment that you will labor under god to make that happen this is where things like irresponsibility and the rest becomes bad are we together now yes the motive that drives many people from marriage is very disturbing because marriage is a lifetime thing and anything that is not lasting will become a disadvantage eventually i hope you are getting blessed with what i'm sharing this is a very powerful valentine message so that as you are preparing you don't just look and say ah i'm not young again no. my department who is there or my this or who is there who can i check and i'm ready for marriage just because the church approves your wedding date doesn't mean you are ready for marriage these are the things that must be in place with all humility you can know i'm ready for marriage i'm ready for marriage because i'm ready to commit 
to providing security and providing the emotional fulfillment. I'm ready for marriage because I am ready to honor my husband sincerely. I am ready to respect. I am ready to honor him truly. Now, let me say this. The real way to be a blessing is to work on yourself. The real way to be a blessing is not expecting what will make you a blessing. It's working on yourself. I think that most times we have it the other way around. Most ladies believe that when you get that exceptional man, when you get that wonderful man, then you will be happy. Most men believe that when you get that exceptional lady, then you will be happy. Let me tell you this. It is true that the value that is built from within you becomes your advantage. I told you that love in marriage is unconditional, but stability and fulfillment is highly conditional. It will be impossible, look up please, it will be impossible for a couple that eventually are not active contributors of value to themselves to indefinitely continue to remain in joy and be happy to treat themselves every day is not true. They will make up their mind that under every condition this marriage will stand. But as far as joy and fulfillment is concerned, it does not just work by default. Listen, please look up. No woman should love her husband just because he brings bread to the table, just because he is visionary, just because he's making progress. However, when that man becomes visionary, when that man becomes responsible, it's easy for her knees to touch the ground because there is a basis. Are we together now? There is a support system that encourages her honor. You cannot compare two women. On one side, you have this man who is not responsible. He's, he doesn't care whether the rent is paid. He doesn't care whether the children are fed. All he knows is that whatever will be, will be. And then a man who is meticulously responsible. The approach of their wives to them will not be the same. The woman will say, I will love my husband forever. But you cannot say they are fulfilled at the same level. Are we together? Fulfillment and stability is based on mutual contribution of value. Please write it down. This is very powerful. That mindset of unconditional love just for nothing. Is going to cost many people a lot because there are many ladies who are not doing anything about their lives. They are not growing, they are not building themselves, they are not building their minds. All they are doing is praying and expecting a visionary, born again, established man to come. Same thing happening for the men. They are not building themselves, they are not building capacity. All they are doing is praying for that wonderful lady to come. It does not work that way. What I am saying is true. You may love me as a person, but you will get fulfilled around me only based on the awareness of the value that I continue to provide for you. Is that true? Yes. When it was time for Isaac to bless his sons, he said, make me venison. It, I know you are my son. But I need value to come from you to gladden my heart so that something can lead me to you. Are we together? Now look up please. As the bride of Christ, we are all his bride. He will never deny you. But in terms of usability, we are not the same. Are we together now? Do you agree with that? That God can almost seem to abandon one person and come and stand and invest his attention on another. Why? Because of your committal to advancing his purposes. The sacrifices you have made to build yourself spiritually. That every time you show up in a place, you allow so much of God to find expression. And God has noted you for being so useful for the kingdom. And so he will guard you. He will protect you. This is how it is. No man will indefinitely be proud of his wife forever for nothing. 
No woman will indefinitely be proud of her husband for nothing. These are hard truths that many will not tell you. But listen, your love will remain regardless of what happens. But your fulfillment and the stability of your home will be predicated upon the mutual awareness of the value that you provide. This is true. All staff are staff in a company, but there is promotion even within that company. And for every promotion, there are many benefits that come with it. Someone can start from level one and in 10, 15 years be at the same level. This happens psychologically. A man can promote his wife in his mind psychologically. She is still his wife. He still loves her. But the depth of honor and committal continues to change. Every time she is an unfolding of wonder, she continues to be an epitome of value. And one day the man will stand and say, Lord, thank you for giving me such a woman. That's how you know you are valuable. So away with that idea that my husband will marry me and no matter what happens, the Bible says he should love me. You are right. But you will still feel the heat of being valueless. Same thing happens to the man. You cannot say, well, I've married and I've married, I've paid a dowry and that's all. You will be surprised at how draggy and grudgy and sad your marriage will be. There will still be love, but there will not be fulfillment. Fulfillment in marriage is highly conditional. I love all the workers in this ministry. You are precious people and you know that I love you with all my heart. But in all fairness, the level and the extent of contribution at an individual level is not the same. Are we together now? That means that the trust level the, and, and many other factors will not be the same. God loves everybody the same, but he does not trust everybody the same. Value is first virtue then skill. Listen, every time we talk of value, don't just think skill. Ladies, don't just think of the ability to cook food alone and the ability to do all. No, 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 no. Your skill comes later. The real value of a person is your virtue. What is your virtue? Your closeness to the character of Christ. We must continue to fight and contend for growth non-stop. Every day, I want to become a better version of me. Listen, a lady here must challenge herself, married or not. You must tell yourself, I will be so exceptional and so virtuous that my husband will look at me and say, Thank God for this gift of God given to me. Same thing with the men. That your wife will look at you tomorrow and say, Thank God for giving me this gift virtue no matter how gifted you are if you do not have virtue and character you will not go far are you hearing what i'm saying now this is very important virtue is a measure of your closeness to christ i always give this analogy that if virtue and skill run in sprint skill will win but if virtue and skill run in marathon virtue will win a day will come when your skill will fail you, but it is your virtue that will keep you. You will get to places in your life where everybody you meet is equally skillful. Your edge will be your virtue. You will get to a point where everybody is brilliant. Every man of God is anointed. Every woman of God is skilled. Your real virtue. See, I have seen the power of virtue, the lifting power of virtue. There are businessmen today who have won contracts worth hundreds of millions of naira and dollars, not necessarily because of their skill, but something about the, the life of their wife, their children, or their husband. You make that company say, No, you are the kind of people we want to work with. You are cautious, you are very respectful. Ladies, Go back and pray. My dear brothers, go back and pray. Thank God for skill, but keep skill and cry and say, Lord, make me exceptional. Being exceptional is like a magnet. It's true. 
There are many skillful people that are not virtuous. You get to a point where in your managerial rights, company-wise, in terms of your career, you will get to a point where it's not just by your skill and technical and intellectual qualification that you rise again. You get to a point where your edge and your advantage becomes the love, the manner. There are people today, you know, I met a man, great man, wealthy man, and I saw a wonderful person that was a chef to him. And, and I asked, and I, you know, I asked that question. I said, um, how did you get this person? And he looked at me and laughed and said, this is one of the nicest elderly woman. This is one of the nicest women in the world. And it's true. When the woman came in within minutes, I had fallen in love with this wonderful woman. Elderly woman and her, the, the level of, of character and manner and cautiousness in speaking the body language of respect and honor is, is almost flattering. I said, my God, where did this woman learn this? That is very true. There are women, visitors come to your house and they vow never to come again. Why? Not because you don't have skill, but you lack character. There are men, people do business once with you and vow that they will never because you are, you are, there is no temperance, there is no patience, there is no joy, there is no self-control. All of these virtues, they are powerful. The world is looking for the fruit of the spirit in men. Even when they know they don't have it. Is God blessing us tonight? Yes, sir. Make sure that you make up your mind that I will be virtuous. I will be virtuous. Virtue is not for women. So men, when we are talking of virtue, don't think and say, I hope this lady is hearing. No. Be exceptional. Look at me. Conquer the limitation of pride. Conquer the limitation of your territory. Ladies, make up your mind and vow before God that I will be an exceptional woman. That because of me, people will love and honor my husband. Husbands, make up your mind that I will be a man of solid character. That because of me, they will love. Do you know lack of character is what is programming disaster for many children? Many of us today, our parents were exceptionally skillful, but they were not virtuous. And there are doors that would have swiftly opened today that are closed. When you are thinking family life, don't think yourself. Think about your children. Think about their 10 years. Think about their 20 years. I do not want a situation where my children will not have an opportunity to enjoy a great life because of me. And people will say, oh, you are apostle's child. No. Whether spiritually or physically, is the reason why we continue to strive by God's grace to create that ladder. So that anybody who follows through that ladder already has a road created. Praise the Lord. It is my commitment in ministry, biologically, and so on and so forth, that anyone who is connected to this vision and this grace, that by God's grace, through our sacrifice, that you will be able to climb on it, that every time you, you are purported to be connected to this grace, it will open doors for you. This is the prayer. This is the desire. But it will not happen by default. And it's not always the issue of anointing. Fetch can you lay hands on your head in one minute and say, Lord, change what needs to change in my life. Please pray. Change what needs to change in my life. I'm not ashamed, no God, before you. Pray. I'm open before you, Lord. Do to me what you want. Please make sure you are praying. Here I am in your presence. Do to me what you want. I'm open before you. To me, what you are. Pray, Lord, make me exceptional. If you are a dear lady, pray. 
Lord, I'm tired of just having skills. Certificate should not be the only thing I'm bringing to my home. Grant me the grace to be exceptional. That my life will not close the door for my husband. That my life will not close the door for my wife. I obtain grace of God from heaven to be exceptional. Regardless my background, grant me grace. Someone is praying, grant me grace. I cry to you, O God of heaven, grant me grace. Supernatural grace by the Spirit. Listen, please sit down, look at me. You must train yourself virtually. Make up your mind. When you dress, dress well. When you speak, speak well. Don't see people and look and say, ah, how far you are bending from what you are not virtuous. You may be human, but you are not virtuous. How many leaders do you want God to bring in your life? With this kind of attitude. And you get what I'm saying? Don't get up in the morning and pass people anyhow. Good morning. Ah, how are we? Fine. God bless you. How is today? Don't see people and pass and say, please, you greeted me. Whether I answer, no. There is no such thing as I am like that. Men can change. Are we together? There is no such thing as I'm angry. We are in our family, we are like that. Hey, whilst I am angry, even my parents give me chance. It's bad. Change it. That's, the house of God is a place of transformation. Please take seriously what I'm saying. Listen, I continue to pray and ask the Lord to reveal to me the aspects of my life. I'm not ashamed of transition. I'm not ashamed of transformation. That what I am not today, I can be tomorrow. Lord, show me. Thank God for the ones I have, but which ones do I not have? Some of you, you need to work on respect. Some of you, you need to work on honor. You don't have honor for people at all. Some of us, you need to work on your mouth. Your mouth is poisonous. It's like a sword. You can tear down people. It's something to work on. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Some of you need to work on the fortitude for jealousy. Little things, the moment you see a celebration somewhere and it's not you, the senior brother of the prodigal son. Hallelujah. Some of you, you give up very easily. Listen, if you don't love yourself, it's wickedness to want another person to love you. Why should someone love what you hate? Are we together now? Learn to draw your confidence from within. First, who you are in Christ. And then second, on the strength of the dexterity of your virtue. Listen, you can stamp your feet with all humility as a man and as a woman and say, by the grace of God, the God of heaven, I know we are growing, but I can stand to say I'm virtuous. It's not pride. I told myself, and many of you who follow my teachings, you've heard me say it. My life's goal, aside from being a man of God, sincerely speaking, my life's goal as a person is that God will grant me the grace that I will become a shoulder for many to lean on. It is a goal and it is a worthy pursuit in my life. I want to be that person who is the first to wrap my hands around people and say, God bless you, you can make it. I want to be the one that when somebody dies, I'm the first person to show up and hold you and say, don't worry. Not to say, where was your faith? Where did you keep? No, 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 no. Make up your mind that in this life, you will be virtuous. Don't just sit and say, why do men not like me? Why is this? It's not just the issue of attack. And it's not just the issue of miracle service. Could this be where the issue is? Make up your mind. I've taught you. You can measure your virtue by how much children love you. If children hate you, believe me, believe me, something is wrong. 
Do you know why? Let me tell you this. Because children will test your patience. Children will force you to stoop down. You see how these my children sometimes after service, while all of you are standing wanting to see the apostle, they don't care. They just come and sometimes they just say, Daddy, bend your ear and I say, look at this. But it's training and I'm happy. It's better to rehearse through them than to mess up in the future. Are we together? Virtue. You see people, you preach people. You do something wrong, you say, I'm sorry. Not hey, what is what is it just thing? You love people. Your words are culture. You don't speak anyhow and talk anyhow and say, yeah, I'm just like that. No. There is intelligence. Through wisdom, the house is built. By understanding, it is established. Through knowledge, the rooms are filled. Is God blessing us? I will soon go to the next aspect. But listen to this. It's a profitable way of celebrating Valentine. It is not saying, Oh God, let somebody send me a gift. God is giving all the force a Valentine gift. And the Valentine gift is sit down. Sit down and walk on your spirit. Are we together? Is better than a timeout because what you do will build you and make you exceptional. Nobody runs away from an individual with such an outspoken manifestation of the fruit of the spirit. You become like I would say, Tula and Hepsiba. There are people who have no regard for elders, no regard at all. You secure the cost of every old person around you because you do not have that virtue of respect. I continue to strive as a person for grace from God. I want to be as exceptional as I can be. As far as I'm concerned, compared to where I'm going, I'm just starting. I will find them out. I will pray them. I will study them until it becomes true in my life. My only advantage should not be anointing. My only advantage should not be revelation. That you will eventually be the best action of God's idea of a man. Can someone have that desire this night? That you will be exceptional. Listen, set a high standard for yourself. Don't just mark your script on an average and set a high standard. When people are saying you are exceptional, you are do don't be carried away by those things. Lord, still work on me. In the area of respect, I'm trying, Lord. I score myself with my reference. I give myself 20%. I still need to read a book. I need to go online. I need to study something about character. And you go online and download a message and look at it. I need to learn on this. And you are praying. Okay, let me study Esther and let me study Ruth. What was exceptional about these women? Let me study David, let me study Solomon, let me study Isaac, and you are building yourself. Lord, make me an exceptional person. Forget about what is not yet there. Focus on what God is doing. Let me tell you, it's only a matter of time. The world will look at you and within a second. Was it not the preparation of Esther that made her exceptional? She passed a hazardous once. Once! There are times that your destiny will not allow you to pass twice. So you have to prepare as though that once is the only time. Please pray in one minute again. Lord, I obtain grace to be an exceptional personality. In the name of Jesus, I conquer the limitation of my background. Some of us come from families where we have not seen the best model of family life. But in the name of Jesus, I make my family life my priority. I make it my priority. And in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, I obtain grace from God. I obtain grace from heaven. I like you to pray that in Koinonia we are building families that are exceptional. In the name of Jesus, no matter what your limitation is today, that your 10 years, your 5 years, your 20 years is full of glory, grace, honor, a message and a lesson for the world to see. Exceptional in every way. Someone is praying. Whether you are in 
a relationship or not, whether you are married or not, lift your voice and pray. Lord, make me. Don't say make my husband. Don't say make my wife. Don't say make my spouse. Pray for yourself. Work on me. Work on my character. Work on that jealousy. Work on that anger. Work on that impatience. Lord, I am not a slave. This is a dressing floor. I am not a slave to be walked upon. Man may laugh at you while God is working on you, but you just continue. It may not be my fault. It may be the background that I came from. It may be the experience I was exposed to. But in the name of Jesus, I kill every excuse. I must be exceptional. I make my family life a priority. Someone is praying. My children will be proud of me. They will call me the first representation of God that they can see. Build in me the fruit of the Spirit. Build in me virtue. Build in me patience. Take away anger. Take away folly from my life. Give me wisdom. Make me outstanding. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I found out if you focus on changing you, God will settle every other thing. Usually, the key is to want your spouse to change. The key is to want your whoever you are going out with to change. But the key thing is you. The more you change, you begin to provoke changes around you. It's a principle. Stop sitting down and reporting your spouse to God and reporting your spouse to everybody and saying, This man, after I gave him five children, is not, yes, he may be wrong, but find a reason to change. There is a way you become so exceptional, it becomes unfair for life to give you certain things. Listen, ladies, let me tell you. There is a way you will work on yourself and build yourself. It becomes unfair in all honesty for certain kinds of people to come to you. Don't sit down where you are and say, I can't marry this kind of person. Me, I'm this. By what standard? Same thing with the men. You can sit down where you are and just say, I believe that only a big... No, sir. Work on yourself. When it is respect, you are there. Character, you are there. Wisdom in communication, you are there. Diplomacy, you are there. Leadership, you are there. Hard work and diligence, you are there. Patience and temperance, forbearance and forgiveness, you are there. You gather these virtues and they make you exceptional. That is the inner beauty the Bible talks about. Greater than outward beauty. Greater than outward six pack and being a macho man. Real virtue that lasts. Your face will wrinkle with time. Your hair will fall with time. But your virtue remains eternal. You will thank me for what you are hearing. It may not make sense now. But be exceptional and see. It's not only your husband that will celebrate you. I promise you, the whole world will stand before you. Whether you are a counselor or not, whether you are a mentor or not, they will come to you and say, I want to be like you. I have observed your life and have observed that you are an exceptional woman. Here is a thousand dollars. Here is five hundred dollars. Can you pray for me? Whatever made you exceptional, you cannot carry nonsense and want the world to celebrate you. I do not want people to only come and celebrate the anointing and celebrate revelation. There should be more. And so I challenge you to join me in that strife of dissatisfaction. Do not clap to any. Go back home and write a list of the things you must work on. Don't be ashamed. See, let me tell you, the moment you become ashamed of growth, you will never rise to certain levels. I do not want to meet the kings of my destiny and have a reason to be ashamed because I had anointing, I had revelation, but no virtue. That the opening of, of your mouth becomes the communication of wisdom. Some of you, impatience has treated you. Some of us, anger has treated us. 
It's one of us foolishness, lack of wisdom alone. Identify those things and pray them. If you need to read books, buy books, Jordan is here. Get books. You can go on YouTube. That is a legitimate ground to load your phone and go on YouTube and say for the next two weeks, I'm going to study about exceptional women, exceptional men. And you pray it in your heart, and God looks at you. It's not your fault. You came from a background where your father was not the best model of a man, your mother was not the best model of a woman. Maybe it was even a polygamous family, maybe it was even a dysfunctional family somewhere. You can't be crying forever because of yesterday. You must summon the courage to say, Look, what I did not eat may my children eat. The joy they did not have. If you succeed in ministry and fail in family, you fail. If you succeed in your office and fail in family, you fail. Are we together? The last, and we're done for tonight. I pray that what I'm sharing tonight will be worth your time here. The third most important priority in your life is your assignment. Just give me a few minutes and we'll pray we're done for tonight. Your assignment asks us the question, why? Remember the first, your relationship with God. Remember the second, your family. Remember the third, your assignment. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 7. about Jesus in the volume of the book look at me koinonia it is written of me to do thy will O God I didn't come to roam around the earth escorting people in destiny for 50 years 60 years 70 years and leaving sad to the grave Dr. Miles Munro in his lifetime said the richest place is not the gold mine in South Africa, not the oil mines in the east. That the richest place, the wealthiest place is the cemetery where dreams that were never lived are there. Where destiny is books that were never written. Lives that would have been changed. No, I come in the volume of the book as it is written on me. Write this down, please. Your greatest fulfillment will come from knowing that you have lived your life serving the purposes of God and blessing humanity. I will take it again. Your greatest fulfillment will come from knowing your greatest fulfillment will come from knowing that you have lived your life serving the purposes of God and blessing humanity. Your greatest fulfillment will not come from cars. Truly I tell you, it will not come from houses. It will not come from your ascending the highest echelon of your profession. As good as that is. Your greatest fulfillment will come from knowing that you live your life serving the purposes of God and blessing humanity. The morning I was in Delta State, I think, when Dr. Miles Munro went to be with the Lord. When the announcement of his death happened, he was headed for a conference somewhere in the region of Bahamas. And then they announced that he was dead, his wife was dead, his assistant dead, 
most of the people, about six of them dead. Do you know Dr. Burroughs, who now heads um, the Bahamas Faith Ministry International? He looked and he said, continue the conference. He said, if Masmundo were alive, he would say, never cry for me. So let's do what he would have wanted. I said, my God, men who treated death, they were so visionary. When he died, they checked his documents and they saw different books that were still in progress. And some of those books have come out now. Abel, though dead, yet speaketh. These are men who treated death. Listen, let me tell you, you can immortalize your impact. You can, you can choose impact to popularity. Popularity is not the same as impact. Popularity is many people knowing about you. Impact is men being changed because you are alive. Do not mistake popularity for impact. Thank God for popularity, but I will give it up a thousand times for impact. Listen, many of us right now, God is speaking to you and saying, get back to where I started with you. I started with you. There are dreams that have died. Many of you, the way God started with you, the Spirit of God continues to cry. It is important to find your purpose before marriage. It is important to find your purpose before money. Because all these things, as powerful as they are, they can tilt you out of purpose. The first dealing of God in my life was purpose. Then the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Then the kingdom. Then finances. Then it continued like that. I thank God for that sequence. Purpose. The first major book I can remember reading was Discovering Your Purpose. Miles Monroe. I read that book and I remember crying. I said, Lord, I will die empty. 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 Why should I live you? completely empty like a drink offering you poured your life sometimes when people see me and say apostle are you not tired i say at this age while i have the strength to move i will move while i have the strength to talk i will talk i will give my best because someday i will not have that strength someday it will be our children reading our legacy when they look those say, once upon a man a time there was a man called apostle joshua selman we should be able to look from heaven and be proud of what we did. You are not called to do everything, but you are called to do something serious. And it is, listen, you have to make up your mind to wake up on this Valentine night and say, in the name of Jesus, I will have to wake up to my destiny. Every time I come to Koinonia, as soon as I come out of the car, I look at all the people and sometimes tears fill my eyes. When I travel to go for ministrations, and sometimes you cannot imagine how tired I am, I just stand and I pray. I say, Lord, I don't even have the time to pray. Just show me your mercy and show me your grace. Visit your people. Thank God the, 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 the message I've prepared. Sometimes I do not even have the time to revise it and all of that. I just say, Lord, I give you all the praise. And sometimes I'm so tired. And I'm tempted to say, what is all this about? Then I just remember, ah, spending your life, bringing glory to His majesty. This is what we do. You don't have to be in ministry to do it. It's a mindset that is bigger than looking for money. It's a mindset that is bigger than looking for fame. Fame is important, but it's mundane when it stands side by side with impact. If nobody knows you, listen. Matthew Stella lived about 767 or 69 years or so. 969. And nobody can remember anything about him. And Jesus lived for 33 and a half years. And the world cannot forget him. There was a woman called Anna the prophetess. The Bible does not tell us so much. Except that her assignment was to stay in the temple and pray Jesus from heaven to earth. And when she saw it, she said, now let my soul find rest. I have seen the constellation of Israel. Listen, you know your impact by the vacuum you create when you are not there. If nobody misses your absence, it means your presence is not a blessing. This is true. Purpose gives meaning and value to everything you do. Write it down, please. Purpose gives meaning 
and it gives value to everything you do. Marriage has a purpose. Money has a purpose. Children have a purpose. Prosperity has a purpose. Let me tell you, the real issue with this our generation is that most of our desires are not connected to purpose. We want to marry for marriage sake. We want to make money for the sake of respect and pride. We want a name for ourselves. Most times people come, I want anointing. What is the purpose tied to it? Purpose is what gives your pursuit of money. It is purpose that makes your pursuit of money not materialism. Because now there is an object behind it. Every time you want to do anything in life, ask yourself why? To what end? Acts chapter 26. Let's look at Paul's manifesto of his purpose. We are going to read the first 18 verses. Be patient with me. We are rounding up. Then Agrippa, this was Paul before Agrippa. Agrippa said unto Paul, Thou art permitted to speak for yourself. And then Paul stretched forth the hand and answered for himself. Read on. I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because I shall answer for myself this day before thee, as touching all things whereof I am accused of the Jews. Uh -huh. Especially because I know you are an expert in this and that. Go to verse 7. Verse 7, please. It says, unto which promised our twelve tribes instantly serving God, day and night, you know, hope to come. For which hope sake, King Agrippa, I am accused of the Jews. Right? Read on. It says, why should it be taught a thing incredible with you that God should raise the dead? I verily thought with myself that I ought to do many things contrary to the name of Jesus. Now, he's talking about his history now. Are we together? Which thing I also did in Jerusalem, and many of the saints did I shut up in prison, having received authority from the chief priests. And when they were put to death, I gave my voice against them. This is the past of a man. And I punished them often very in every synagogue, and compelled them to blaspheme, and being exceeding mad, exceedingly mad against them, I persecuted them even unto strange cities. Uh huh. Whereupon, as I went to Damascus, everybody look at this, with authority and commission from the chief priests, at midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven, above the brightness of the sun, shining round about me, and them which journeyed with me. Uh -huh. We are reading to 19. And when we were all fallen to the earth, I had a voice speaking to me, saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the priest. And I said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus whom thou persecuted. Uh -huh. But rise and stand upon your feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose. I have appeared unto thee for this purpose. What is the purpose? To make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen and of those things in the which I will appear unto you. Delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom I shall send thee to open their eyes. It's an assignment and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me where upon O King Agrippa that's my prayer for you I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision listen every time you do not leave out your assignment you cost someone. Somebody's destiny will suffer when you do not rise to what God has ordained for you to do. Are we together? What is your purpose and your assignment? Your contribution to kingdom advance. The role you have been mandated to play in that thy kingdom come project. That universal project of the spearheading of the influence and the power of God. Now please look up. Not everybody as far as purpose is concerned 
will have a pioneering grace. Not everybody will be a general overseer. Not everybody will be a man of God. Not everybody will be an apostle, a prophet, and all of that. But your assignment is to find your role. It doesn't necessarily mean you must have a platform to your name. The most important thing is your role, the role that you have to play. Let me tell you, there are many purposeless people that continue to loiter around the face of the earth, waiting for either a job or marriage or geographic relocation to give them a sense of meaning in their lives. Make up your mind. Lord, what did you bring me here to the earth for? I cannot be escorting people all around. For others, God can tell you like Moses, I've raised you to be a savior. For others, God can raise you like Aaron and still hold the hands of Moses while he performs that function. For others, it will be the 70 elders that his spirit will come upon. For others, it will be the Joshua. For others, it will be the Esther's who need to rise to the throne. Esther's assignment was first marriage. Her victory was dependent on marriage. Have you seen that now? If that is the reason why it is important to find out purpose before marriage. Because if you now find out that your purpose contradicts what you are now doing, you are in trouble. God will have to make do with what is there. It's God blessing for you. Our society is full of idle people. They wake up in the morning and they do not do anything. And I say this respectfully, especially for the gentlemen. There is, there is, there is, there is nothing that pinches my heart like seeing a young, vibrant gentleman confused and wallowing in purposelessness, strolling around in the morning, not knowing where you are going. There is nothing that is worth your waking up. There is nothing that is worth your sitting down. What are your plans for today? Nothing. Is there anything for me? Uh, okay, let's go out. I mean, you can't live your life like that. You close your eyes, you find out you are forty years. Close your eyes again, you are 50 years. Close the last one, you are 60 years. Listen, every time I celebrate my birthday, there is this one vision. I have my piles of books from the time God began to speak to me. And I opened them. No way. It is why when I sit down, sometimes when I sleep, I just get up and say, man, you have messages to prepare. There are lives that need to be changed. Stand up quickly. There is work to, to be done. Oh, there's some prayers to do. Because there is a meeting to attend and there are destinies depending on you. Stand back at those here. Change them, oh God. Lay your hands and say, Lord, show me. Show me. Show me. Reveal to me. What is my role in your program? I'm tired of escorting people up and down, left, right and center and not finding a basis for fulfillment. Someone is praying. What is my role in your program? Listen, look up. A few things and then we are going to pray. Please look up. Did you know that your assignment is divided into seasonal mandates. Do not forget this. Your assignment is divided into seasonal mandates. There are people who are workers in this ministry today. But the grace upon them, tomorrow they are going to have their churches. Tomorrow they are going to have their parishes. But in this season, their assignment is to be faithful as far as working and learning is, is concerned. Are you seeing that now? Yes. Nothing gladdens my heart when I have to talk with the workers and sometimes I see the leaders and I see them committed in doing something that is worth it. Listen, it's a cost to wake up in the morning and not have a justification for spending your day. You wake up in the morning, nothing to do. So what's my today about? I don't know. You watch movie, you go on internet, you come back and watch movie, you go on internet, you read a book, gossip here and there, sit down, eat food, go out, come back in the evening, yawn yourself to sleep. It's a useless life. You must make up your mind. Visionary people have to beg sleep to wait. 
wait, please wait. Give me two more hours. Because what is burning in my spirit? Do you know sincerely, let me tell you, there are times that I wake up in the morning and the last thing I can remember is, okay, I woke up, maybe I went to bed by five, I wake up around nine and I'm busy I, and the next thing I'm checking and it's nine in the evening. And I'm like, my God, what in the world is this? What in the world is this? I have so much to do. Before you finish learning and writing and praying and doing all of that, you want to pray, you close your eyes, time is gone. But for many of you, because of lack of vision, you pray for five minutes, there is no burden on you. Are we together? Nothing that compels your prayer. Lord, I thank you. You are the Lion of the tribe of Judah. You are the Rose of Sharon. Thank you for my life. Thank you for my parents. Thank you for my loved ones. I give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Of course, that's all if you, if you are not a visionary person. But there are times that praying for koinonia alone can take you a whole day. You take the departments one by one. Lord, worship teams. Give them songs from heaven. Give them visions from heaven. Take another department. Before you do three, the whole day has gone. That food is kept in front of you and you cannot even remember that there is food in front of you. If there is nothing that has that grip and that obsession on you, it is a sign you are not living a visionary life. Believe me when I tell you, after service now, I'm seeing people here, when I go back home, it's not sleep. Oh. Sleep? I receive an average of 500 to 600 text messages every day. Aside from calls. And some of them are you. And you are angry that I don't respond to it. Right now, my phone, my phone is never off. Never. Never. Except maybe they are removing the, 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 the battery or something. Maybe changing steam or something. It is never off. Because of the noise of the pressure and the burden of ministry the last time i had music from my phone like ringtone was 2012. i put my phone on silent permanently till tomorrow what do you think ministry is what do you think leadership is ah god is just lifting them please receive grace to be serious in the name of jesus christ 11 o'clock you are already sleeping the last thing god told you to do two years ago is still there you've not developed it you are not reading any book i hope you are not angry no book on your table nothing on your laptop i check your phone and all i see is just browsing and gisting you mean you don't do any other thing please receive grace to settle down there are some of you what you need to do now. The 5,000 God bless you with. Use 2,001 by stages and settle down. Make up your mind. I will not sleep. I will not wake up later than 8 o'clock for no reason again. Buy an alarm clock in the market. Are we together? Myself, you must be disciplined for the sake of your destiny. Myself, you must be disciplined. This unnecessary hunger that distracts. Tell yourself in the name of Jesus, I'm not fasting, but I will buy a drink. Food, be disciplined. The Sabbath was created for man. And you study. Okay, today I'm studying on faith. And you don't let any devil distract you. You are reading on faith. You listen to three. Do you know there are people who are not even workers here? They listen to an average of three to five koinonia messages. I listen to an average of three koinonia messages every day without fail. I'm the one that preached it all, and I listen to it again with my heart open. There are things if I do not do in a day, my eyes will not be sleep. Please listen, I'm opening up my heart so that we'll be serious. This thing is not luck. You don't get the anointing just by wish. No. You don't grow into dimension by saying a season just came. Do you know the amount of prayer and investment it takes to really carry power? Spiritual power that works. There are weeks that I have an average, it happens most time in January, there was the time I had 18 sermons in one week. And you must prepare them. 
my brothers and my sisters, I destroy the spirit of laziness from your mind this night. And I pray for you that one of the things you will learn in this Valentine's, some of you, God is calling you into the area of business, but you will not sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Buy books. Read. I gave us three books to read. Some of you don't even, you've not even seen how the cover looks like. It's carelessness. When I'm traveling, whether it's to Abuja or anywhere, or almost all through the journey, it is worship and a sermon and something. I don't have that time to waste. I may be as sleepy as whatever when I'm listening. I can't waste three hours, four hours, five hours. I'm either charging my spirit in worship or I'm listening to something. Listen, life is time tagged. You will not always have the energy and the time. And there is a time when you should have prepared and built certain capacities. Whether you are ready or not, life will open the, the stage. So build capacity now. Don't you know that when you get married, you may not have that time to pray the way you want again. Because you are now under your own authority. No matter how prayerful you are. So now that you have the luxury to roll on the ground. Thank God. Don't just keep saying, Lord, when will my husband come? Let me build capacity. I don't know what it means to pray when you are pregnant. I don't know what it means to pray when you pray now. Each for the journey is far. There are men, you don't know what it means to serve God with pressure of school fees. So now that you are alone, you are not paying anybody's school fees. You will write sermons today that you will use for the next 10 years. There are messages I still go back and make reference to them. I wrote some of those messages sometimes 2004, 2005, 2006. I just developed them and build on them. Something must consume your heart. Something must burn within your spirit. Whether you are a man of God or not, Apostle, this is the goal I've set this year. What are you doing? I want to become a sound expert. Tell me what you are doing now for it. Nothing. One day, I'm sure that Koinonia will organize training of sound people. That is the language of carelessness and laziness. I want to become an exceptional mother. I believe it is a call. Show me what book you are reading. Show me the exceptional people. I want to have a great foundation today that will raise great women and great... Show me what model you are studying now. I should come and meet you walking. When you are visionary, it's easy to say no to many things. Ah! Apostle, can I come and visit you? I'm sorry. I'm busy. But you cannot... You can't sit down. People come and say, borrow me your television and your are busy. Let me play the movie. Because you are free. Completely free. I have taught you, receive grace to master the night. This night time is a good time to sleep, but it's also a good time to make spiritual investments. I can tell you this. For some reason, the spirit of revelation is heavy upon men in the night. When people slumber around and you are just walking around and just saying, Lord, thank you. Thank you for the next level. This year now that there's a lot of expansion and a lot going on in ministry. You cannot tell, I travel, I return, I'm tired, there are things I'm praying. Lord, let's make sure that we're working with your will. There's a department to meet, there are people to meet, there's a, this and that and that. There's no laziness. You can't be eating, 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 and you sleep down, you sleep, you get up. When you are truly idle, you become the devil's workshop. I hope you know purpose is not looking for money. Except if looking for money leads to purpose. Purpose is finding that which can bring you back to the life of men. That's purpose. Looking for food to eat is not purpose. Except if my purpose of eating it is to find the energy to fulfill God's assignment. Please everybody write. Lord reveal to me my assignment in this season. Go and pray it as a prayer point. Reveal to me, oh God, my assignment. Imagine if Bishop Oyeniko did not find his place in destiny. Imagine if 
Papa Ia Deboe did not find his place in destiny. Imagine if fathers like W.F. Kumuyi did not find their place in destiny. Imagine if there were no Benny Hins. Imagine if there were no T.L. Osborns. Imagine the world without these men. Imagine the world without men like Nelson Mandela. I made up my mind that I would give my best for God and for this generation. Let it be that I did my best. My best, Lord, is everything I am. My best, Lord, I give all I have to you. My best, Lord, is all I have to give. My best, Lord, I give all I have to you. I wrote this song many years ago as a commitment. It was a vow and a covenant. Lord, if I die doing what I'm doing, that it is with honor that I died for you. For me now to live is Christ, and to die is gain. It's not a confession. It's true. That's why I'm like, hey! I don't panic. I'm already dead. Dead people don't die twice. It is appointed unto men to die once. I will spend this life God has given me serving. You do not know the honor that I have serving this generation and serving the purposes of God. The greatest thank you is not an alert. The greatest thank you is not fame. It's not a name. The greatest thank you is supposed to thank God you are born. That because of you, my life is changed. Because of you, my father is saved. Because of you, I found direction. Sometimes I hold those things. I'm not a very emotional person, but tears just come down my eyes. And I say, Lord, thank you. Thank you for making me a gift to this generation. You can be Barabbas. You can be Jesus. The choice is yours. You can be the two thieves standing, hanging on the cross. Or you can be Jesus. I made up my mind that I will give God and this generation my best. He gave his best for me. I will give my best for you. So when you see me travel and you see me do the things that I do, oh dear generation, hear me. It is not because we are necessarily exceptional. There is a fire that burns from within us. It is the fire to see the globe set ablaze. We will set this generation on fire in a way that has not been seen. We will contribute our quota to kingdom come. And when all is said and done, we will stand like the fathers who have gone ahead of us and salute the earth and make sure that we leave a legacy that outlives us. And then we will wave the earth goodbye with honor. Be wise in your living. Don't live like a fool. Live as though time is passing. You've celebrated five birthdays in purposelessness. From the time God started nudging you, wake up. Wake up. Arise! Thou that sleepest. It is time to wake up. God is calling you to be a kingdom financier. You don't become a kingdom financier at 70. It's not a blessing. So go and buy all the books on finances. Not for the purpose of having money. For the purpose of having the tools that it will take to minister. Oh, Apostle, God is calling me to be a man of God. That's not the time to loiter around looking for invitations. That's the time to fast when others are not fasting. That's the time to pray when people are sleeping. Not Apostle, they should give me Bible study in one church. Pray that my pastor will see me. No. That's the time to step you down. Premature manifestation will kill you. God tells you your assignment is to be a man of God's wife. That's not the time to say, where is he? What is your business? You stay and build yourself. Lord, I will need patience. I obtain grace. God tells you you are going to be an evangelist traveling around the world. You should be casting the demons that cause plane crash. You should be praying. What do, what do you mean by there's nothing to do? You settle down and pray. 
Lord, in advance, I prophesy to the partners that will have to stand by me. May I not be stranded because of finances. Let it not be that while I'm preaching the gospel, my children don't have their school fees paid. I receive the spirit of revelation. I need to preach two or three messages per day. I obtain grace from God. I will be persecuted in ministry. I will be misunderstood in ministry. Lord, build my capacity now so that when those times come, I will not be distracted. Hallelujah. When Jesus walked the earth, he began to challenge the government of the day. He introduced to them a dimension of spiritual reality that challenged the status quo of that day. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Until then, the council were religious people who were concerned about the rituals as given to them as they had kept. And here comes this young man. In fact, it, it's very interesting because at age 12, we see Jesus submitting himself to mentorship, learning under the scribes, the Pharisees, and then theologically speaking, for 18 years, we do not hear about Jesus again. We do not know where he went to, and then there are all kinds of suggestions. But the next time we see this young man that the Bible calls the Word of God, he's age 30, and he's on his way to the Jordan. Are we still together? And then John is baptizing and John looks at him and says, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. John looks at him prophetically. This was the guy that I've been waiting for. I hope you know that baptism was a formula to help him identify the Christ. That's why he stopped the moment he found Jesus. There was no record of him baptizing again. So it was a spiritual formula that was given to him. So he would baptize and look up. The heavens would not open. He says, you can go. He would baptize, look up, and then he sees this strange man. And then, prophetically, he said, I am not even worthy to untie the latchet of your shoe. And Jesus said, permit it to be so. You see that? This, I can stay there and teach all night because... Even the word walked under a closed heaven for 30 years. The logos of God personified his heavens did not open because he was the word. It took a man to cause his heavens to be open. This already is a message for a man of God. It may be the reason you can be anointed as you are. 30 years. The word filled with the I mean I mean the, the the scripture and the logos of God and yet his heavens remain closed and God is watching until he comes to this strange man called Elijah Elijah is hidden in a body we named John the body was only a continuation of an agenda now listen very carefully Elijah is not a person. Elijah is a mystery system that is ordained to judge Babylon. You have to follow me. We are coming, we are dealing with something serious this night. The first manifestation of the spirit of Elijah was in Noah, not even the person Elijah. It is the spirit that foreruns revival. That every time the day of the Lord is about to come, Elijah must be sent. It's a spiritual protocol. And it was only prophet Malachi that saw this. Are we blessed? So the Bible tells us that this man, Elijah, shows up. Every time there is an antichrist system. Because Babylon, like Jezebel, is an antichrist system. They, they are not the names of people. Don't let the bodies deceive you. The bodies can come and go, but the systems continue. Are we together? You have to understand my discourse. So Jezebel is a system that always seeks government. When Babylon and Jezebel, that she goddess, every time she shows up in a region and a territory, she's not concerned about any other thing but power because it is until she sits in the seat of governance. So Jezebel comes and insists that she's the wife of Ahab. And suddenly the Bible says, and Elijah the Tishbite, a strange man shows up from nowhere 
and the entire battle is between two people not two nations Elijah and Jezebel Elijah stops rain destroys the prophets of Baal and only one person takes it personal Jezebel and she insists that I will take off the head of Elijah Elijah goes to heaven Jezebel dies still too Jesus is on earth and suddenly Elijah resurfaces in a strange man eating locusts and wild honey we gave him the name John the Bible says he came in the spirit and the power he came as a continuation of the mission of Elijah suddenly Jezebel resurfaces in a lady called Herodias and the discourse continues are we together when John is done baptizing he finds himself in prison and on a, an anniversary like this a girl dances before the king and they say what do you want she now consults with her mother and says that head that I promised I would take off I want an end to this ministry I want an end to this system because when there is no John there is no open heaven when there is no Elijah even the word walks under closed heaven I don't even know how I got here that's that's really know what what I'm talking about but now listen South Africa please hear me so Jesus began to introduce his his teachings were strange the people followed him and now he gathered and started his conference and they paid attention to the content of his discussion he now began to teach them about another kingdom he was now sharing with them the modus operandi of another kingdom and it was strange his examples the context of his communication in luke chapter 4 when you read from verse 15 down the bible says he came to the temple to read as his custom was then it was given to him the scroll of Esaias the prophet he holds it and then he begins to read the messianic prophecy the spirit of the lord is upon me he says for he hath anointed me to preach glad tidings to the meek he hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted to set at liberty the captives are we together now then he closes the book and says this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears he looks at a woman with a withered hand and says stretch forth your hand that means i have come as a manifestation of another kingdom now listen please so the bible clearly tells us that there is a contention between two kingdoms you have to understand this there are seven dimensions of the gospel that the bible teaches i'll only give you two of them one the first is called the gospel of salvation please listen this is a believers conference and god is maturing us the gospel of salvation is a revelation of the substitutionary sacrifice in fact is the revelation of the father's love when you teach the gospel of salvation god is father the mediator is the son who is savior and substitute the object the recipient of that love is man are we together now yes so the gospel of salvation is an attempt to reveal the father's love personified in the sacrifice of a man to the end that if we believe that report and receive the son it was apostle john who said this is the record that god has given us the way eternal life and then he says listen carefully he says that the, that life was so constructed such that you cannot receive it without the son it is whoever has the son that also has that life but that is not the only dimension of the gospel listen very carefully the assignment of the gospel of salvation is to initiate you into the kingdom experience it is not supposed to stop the journey i will give you the first and the seventh the seventh is called the gospel of the kingdom now when you teach the gospel of the kingdom god is no longer father alone he is king 
The saints are no longer weak recipients of love. They are ambassadors. They are witnesses. Now mandated. The gospel of salvation is the demonstration of God's love to you. The gospel of the kingdom is your response back to Him. So now you become an ambassador mandated to advance the frontiers of the kingdom. Are we together now? If this understanding is barren in the believer, nothing else in your kingdom experience will make sense. It is purpose that gives value to any experience. Before we begin to discuss the subject of wealth and abundance and prosperity and increase and all of these things, it is important for us to understand the motivation behind the heart of God. Otherwise, every other thing will be valueless. Are we blessed? So Jesus begins to introduce in a mentorship session that we call the Beatitudes. It was an attempt to begin to introduce the people to kingdom living. Say kingdom. Hallelujah. Now Jesus begins to teach. And then he now comes to introduce a concept of prayer. And he says, after this manner, he said, pray ye, Abba, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Then he uses a very strange expression, your kingdom come by your will being done in earth, not on earth. The first piece of earth that needs the kingdom is you. This earthen vessel, not just territory. Both you and the territory are all earth. So your kingdom come in earth. Your will be done. That's how the kingdom comes, when his will is being done. Are we together now? And with many other exhortations, he started introducing them to kingdom living. By the time Jesus is on his way to heaven, they had understood the concept of kingdom. That they were not people just loitering around the earth without an agenda. That it was a contention of two kingdoms. Number one, the kingdom that promotes the interests of the Christ. Number two, the kingdom that is antichrist in context. This is the beginning of my teaching proper. You have to understand this. Brothers and sisters, South Africa, Africa, the entire globe is a... It is, it is, there are not many things happening on earth. There are many activities, but there are only two agendas. The exaltation and the revelation of the Christ. And the contention of that agenda. Every other thing is sandwiched between this. Your landlord issue. Your education. They are only subsets of a bigger problem. You have to understand this. The mandate of the church and the believers. Is to be able to reveal and exalt the Christ. To establish his purposes first in the hearts of men, then across every strata of human activities. This is our corporate agenda. And that we belong to a kingdom, the Bible says, that when a believer encounters the Christ, there is a translation. Do you believe that? A literal translation from the kingdom of darkness, the Bible says, into the kingdom. So there is a translation of kingdoms. Just because you are translated does not mean the other kingdom is null and void. It is still there with an agenda. Are we blessed? So Jesus is talking to them about the church now in Matthew 26. And he says, who do men say that I the son of man is? And they began to debate about who they thought he was. And he says, now you've walked with me. What is your verdict? And Peter speaking by the Spirit. He said, I know who thou art. Thou art Christ, the son of the living God. And he said... Flesh and blood hath not revealed this to you. Is that true? But the spirit of my father. And this I say unto you, thou art Peter. And upon this strategy, I will build my church. The rock is not Peter. The rock is not most of these things we talk about. The rock is a strategy. I will build my church upon a strategy. There is a formation. And if allowed to be built thus, the Bible says, the gates of hell. So Jesus acknowledges that there is an arsenal that looms around the horizon attempting to sabotage the program of God. Please follow me. Let's make sense of our Christian experience. 
Apostle, why did I find myself suddenly barren? You are in the middle of a story. You are in the middle of an agenda that predates even your arrival here. It's the contention of two kingdoms. Apostle, why should I prosper? Why does the devil attempt to fight me? Why do I need to be committed to kingdom advance? Listen, anything that we do in the kingdom does not really capture the level of value and impact until it is tied to kingdom come. Kingdom come is what gives value to every strategy. It gives value to your prosperity. It gives value to your receiving the anointing. It gives value to your evangelism. Everything that you are doing on its own is only a means to an end. What gives life and value is that whatever you are doing is a contribution towards that agenda called thy kingdom come. Are we together? So we are establishing the fact that we are in the midst of two kingdoms. They are real kingdoms. Just because they are spiritual does not mean they do not exist. Because everything spiritual must express itself in the physical realm. That's the technology of creation. Hebrews 11 verse 3. The Bible says through faith we understand that the walls were framed. They had their formation from a realm and a dimension that is outside of this realm. So physical things are only a reflection of what is happening in the realm of the spirit. Are we together now? Job, the story of Job teaches us that things must be finished in the realm of the spirit before they begin here. This is true. So we have two kingdoms. Every one of you looking at me, those following online from whatever nation, we are in a contention between two kingdoms the kingdom of light the kingdom of darkness the system that seeks to exalt the christ and babylon an antichrist system a system so designed by the intelligence of satan to see to it that the purposes of god are thwarted hallelujah praise the lord are we blessed now let's go back to our initial scripture the bible says third john beloved now john is telling us that god desires us to prosper but he's giving us a secret that we'll study tonight as we pray may god open our eyes to see in the name of jesus he's saying that in an attempt to do well in life there is a side effect that i want to give you a precaution immediately that there is something Satan seeks. He does not seek money. He does not seek your healing or your health. He does not seek your business. That what Satan is after is the souls of men. And he's saying that every time you press to prosper, there is a side effect. So he's giving a precaution that as you rise, make sure you continually check that your soul is also prospering. Are we together? <laughs> Matthew, Mark chapter 8, from verse 36 and 37. Mark chapter 8. The Bible says, What shall it profit? Hello, business people, profit. We are discussing profit here, but the commodity is the world and the soul, not pure. Um, what they call it now um, we, we have in Nigeria we have what we call pure water and then we have um, clothes we have all kinds of things when you say you are in business usually you will bring a product my cloth my water my this and the Bible is saying that the real commodity for exchange is the world and your soul look up Jesus is talking profit here so if you are a businessman you should pay attention because it's discussing profit. What shall it profit a man? So men can profit. But it says, if you gain the world and lose your soul. This is, this, is not, this is not a salvation message. This is a business message. That in doing business, 
you can gain certain things and lose certain things and he's saying you have not profited if your soul is what you are losing are we blessed so the soul can be traded please listen church of the lord jesus christ you can only buy what can be sold and jesus is saying here that the world can be sold and a man's soul can also be sold are we together and he's saying what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul he reveals here the technology of prosperity when you are dealing with the antichrist system that there is a strategy satan knows that men must prosper satan knows that they are desperate that our world is controlled by economic power and so he does not listen the strategy is that he's waiting somewhere in your life and he's only interested in your soul not your product that sooner or later you will be introduced to the negotiation table and he will give you an offer that i can give you the world and all i want oh god you are my god and i will ever praise you oh god you are my god and i will ever praise you i will seek you in the morning i have learned to walk in your way for step by step you lead me and i will follow you all of my days Matthew chapter 4 please look up there were three temptations that Satan brought to Jesus which is a revelation of how Satan baits men you let me tell you you will never access kingdom wealth if you do not understand what I'm teaching you this is how to make men prosper it's more than a business seminar it's a revelation of an agenda that is bigger than buying and selling Are we blessed? You see what you get in church. You don't get this in a bank. I was glad when they said unto me. Now, Satan, verse 1, Matthew chapter 4. Then Jesus was led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Now, Satan wants to tempt Jesus. Two interesting characters and we must study them carefully because the bible says looking up to jesus that means understudy him are we together now isn't it amazing that while jesus was fasting satan was waiting patiently so sometimes your fast attracts the devil it doesn't jesus is fasting and praying just understand what i'm teaching you afterwards he was hungry verse 3 we're reading to verse 11 the moment he's done fasting ladies and gentlemen the first person he meets is not the holy ghost it's not an angel satan left earth and was waiting for that fast and he engages in a conversation if thou be the son of god that means that the point of satan's temptation is what god said if god has not spoken he has no business coming he wants to know what god said because his power follows his word we studied it that the word the light of god is the hiding place of his power walk with me i'm trying to walk a lot of things and just put them together are we together now the bible says the tempter came to him and said if thou be the son of god command that these stones be made bread next verse and jesus said it is written 
Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. Men of God, I'm sure during the pastor's conference and business conference tomorrow, we'll teach on this. There are three temptations that represent challenges that everybody must overcome. The first level is your belly, your personal needs. He came to him and he said, you are hungry. Remember, leave ministry. Your stomach is making a lot of noise. You can turn this stone to bread. And Jesus said, my obsession about that agenda is bigger than my need. That's how he overcame that first temptation. Now, second, the Bible says he take him up. You see, when you read, read intelligently. How do you take a man up? By holding him. Satan is holding the word and he's not shaking. He's not falling. He's saying, with me. And the word is following him. <laughs> now, watch this. Satan taketh him up into the holy city. How they entered there and that location is strange. Because if that location were physical, people would come around. In all of these locations, they were the only two people. And set him on a pinnacle of the temple. What was the temptation? If thou be the son of God, cast yourself down. So the temptation of great people is to fall down. After all, you will be held. When you rise high, the temptation is carelessness. You can fall. There will be a way to hold you. He, and it, he said it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee. And in their hands, Satan is quoting this scripture. Next temptation. That is my concern for tonight. It is written, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord your God. Uh -huh. And then verse 8. Again, now, South Africa. Let's talk. The devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain. The mountains the Kariah talked about. The mountain Hegai talked about. He said, go up the mountain. Bring wood. Build me a house. You don't find wood on the mountain. You find wood in the forest. So that kind of wood is not the wood you are thinking. There is a kind of wood that is only found on the mountain. And we use that wood to build God a house that he may be glorified. And the Bible says he took him to a mountain. Mountains talk about spheres of influence. You know that. And then the Bible says he showed him the kingdoms. Where is that location that you can stand and suddenly see the kingdoms of this world and the glory of them. Satan takes Jesus to a location where only two of them can go. And he stands from there and sees the entire glory of the cosmos. And then he says, verse 9, All these things, what things? The kingdoms of this world, are we together? And the glories of them, I will give you. This is a businessman. Look how Satan is marketing a product. He said, see it first. Let me show you the glories of the cosmos. And then he said, now that you have seen it. The greatest way, listen. I will give you and all I want in return is fall down and worship. So this is how you sell your soul. Watch this. I hope, are, are you, are, am I, is it making sense what I'm teaching you? We are finding out how men sell their souls. And Satan is teaching us that he's a businessman. It's interesting that he calls selling, giving. He didn't say, I will sell you the world. He says, I will give you. But all I want in return is fall down and worship me. Why? Because the Christ came as the express image of God. Remember, his assignment was to run a parallel government. I hope you still remember. And now, one comes who is 
Christ, the manifestation of the Father's glory. And he says, bow. So that I can look at the Father and say, what I failed to do that I was judged from heaven. Now that I have your Son, who is the express image of the Father, to bow down does not just mean to bend down. To bow down is to acknowledge Lordship. Allow me in experience to be Lord. The word Lord means absolute owner, absolute manipulator of your life. And I will give you the glories. Do you understand what John is teaching now? That, beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper. However, because your prosperity is around the cosmos, one day a stranger is going to come and give you an invitation. And the context of that invitation is he will show you the glories of the cosmos. And he will give you an offer. The offer is bow down and I will give you the glories. Daniel chapter 3. Babylon, the Antichrist government, is about to show us and buttress on this system and how it operates. When you understand this and you stand and say, Lord, I truly give you everything, you will now know what you are saying. Nebuchadnezzar, the king, made an image of an image of not an image of mortar the image was made with gold the height of it was 90 feet and he set it up in the plain of dura in the province of babylon please follow me patiently next verse nebuchadnezzar now watch this he sets up his image. Notice. Do you know that in the dealings of God with men, you never glorify yourself. The dominion system is a shared system. Watch this. You receive glory by investing your glory in another outside of you. So the father does not glorify himself. He gets his glory from the son. The son does not glorify himself. He gets his glory from the church. In partnership with the Holy Spirit. The church cannot glorify herself. She gets her glory from her dominion over the cosmos. So this is how the Father, the Son, the church is glorified. But the Antichrist spirit always seeks to promote self. So we see that here Nebuchadnezzar builds 90 feet using gold. Take note of that word, gold. Are we working this thing out together? And then the Bible says, look at the people he gathered. Look at the caliber. Don't notice that some people here were not invited. Look at the kind of people who were gathered to come and witness the stature of gold. What shall it profit a man? Hmm. He gathered together. Through the influence of that gold, the influence of that gold image compelled the attention of princes, governors, captains, judges, treasurers, the counselors, sheriffs, all the rulers of the provinces come to the dedication of that image. That means that gold has a voice. It can call certain people. It can call certain systems. He built an image and made a clarion call. And these nobles began to come. Next verse. I hope you know that all these people control different sectors and systems. Instead of calling everybody in a system, you only call the gatekeepers. Because when you capture the gatekeepers in a system, everyone must follow through. The devil is not going to go around the oil and gas or going around the mining looking for everyone one by one. That, that's too laborious. All he needs is to find out who are the gatekeepers. And he will call them for a meeting. Nebuchadnezzar is not just calling the citizens in Babylon. He's calling certain noble people to come and honor an image. 
And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Let's read, please. It says, Then an herald cried aloud, To you it is commanded, O people, nations, and languages, uh -huh, that at what time ye hear the sound, do you see the role that worship and the music ministry plays in as giving a sign that it is when the music ministry fronts this, all nations bow. Wow. <laughs> when you hear the sound of the cornets, the flutes, the harp, and all of these things together, ye fall down. You now see what Satan was trying to get Jesus to do? Fall down and bow before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Next verse. It says, Whoso falleth not and worshipeth not, the same hour will be cast into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. What do they call financial catastrophe? They call it a meltdown. It is fire that melts things down. That your failure to bow down to a system can have an effect. Fire. You will be exposed to fire. Seven. So when everybody heard, let me run through this. They now fell down. Verse 8. At that time, certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews. Nine. They spake unto the king. They said, live forever. Ten. Don't mind me, I'm just summarizing it. That when all this happened, go to verse 11. The Bible says, you said this and that and that would happen. Verse 12. Be patient. The whole chapter is what is important. It says, there were certain South Africans. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, don't generalize. There are still 7,000 who have not bowed to bear. It says there are certain South Africans. You have set them over the affairs of the province of Babylon. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. It says these men, please go back, verse 12. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods nor worship the golden image yet they are rulers in the province so what technology did they use they are rising not by bowing can you pray in the spirit for just one minute Certain South Africans that said we will not bow, yet we will rise. We are a people, men and women. We were not just money mongers. We are not just businessmen. We are not just men of God. We understand that there is a government that we pledge our allegiance to. Just because we live and work in the cosmos, don't confuse it. Verse 13 We're discussing Something very serious Please take it down for me again The Bible says Nebuchadnezzar The God of that system Was angry Who are these men You are doing ministry without compromise Who are these men I hear you don't bribe as you do business. Hold on. Who are these men? I hear you preach whether things are favorable or not. The Bible says, listen, their refusal to bow created a reaction. Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, commanded, he said, bring them. They were brought before the king. There are two kinds of invitations. You can come before Pharaoh to be lifted, or you can come before Nebuchadnezzar to be judged. The 
Bible says, but the people that do know they are God. The first requirement for business is not value, it's encounter. It says, I hear you do not serve my God, nor worship the golden image I have set up 15. Now, if you are ready, I will give you another chance. Join the system. Don't fight it. Today. I'm giving you a... I, I don't want you to feel frustrated because my anger is harsh. Do not call upon the name of the Lord while you preach. Do not let any worship song play around your house. Do not let people hear the name Jesus around your business vicinity. Next verse. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O king, when it comes to this matter, we have respected you, but you have touched a nerve. We are about to show you we are not just workers in your kingdom. We are only using the system to serve another government. There's an army rising up. Someone please play for me. Come on. Someone should be able to play that for me. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. They will break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, yeah. break every chain. Please sit down. Please sit down. Please sit down, my God. I sense a strong anointing here. Please give me a little volume, my friend. Now listen. He said, all king, when it comes to our civil duties, we will honor you. But when you touch our loyalty to this government, we are not just workers. Kali Parus. We are not just workers. I may be a clerk. But I'm not just a clerk. I am one in fraternity with a government. Higher than the government of any state. I need a change for me. Let's deal with this thing. Please sit down. It says, We are this determined to see His glory revealed that our God is able to deliver us from the effect that the system will bring on our serving Him. It says, And we know He will deliver us. Next verse. But if not, be it known unto thee that this fraternity is not for things, that I'm not just serving him for promotion. The context of my is I listen, this right here is faith. Faith is not only the power to receive, faith is also the power to lay down. Time will fail me, the Bible says, to talk of Gideon and Jephthah and Barak. Men who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, shut them out of lions. The Bible says women who received their dead to life, and it says others died without receiving the promise. It still called all of them elders that obtained a good report. Listen, South Africa, if the context of your Christianity is until lifting comes, until promotion comes, you must get to a point where you say, Don't he slay me? Yet will I trust him. I have made up my mind, is a commitment that my children will serve my God, that my business will serve my God, that my. 
There will be a generation in South Africa that preserves the heritage of revival and power. It's good to make money. It's good to rise. It's good to increase. But our children must call upon the God of the Father. Please sit down. Sit down. I sense a strong anointing in this place. Please sit down. Please sit down. The Bible says there is a consequence when you make up your mind that I will not do this kind of business. We are not talking about oil and gas. Now watch this please. When you read on, please go to verse 20. Let's hurry up. That is the last verse. He commanded as a result, bind these people, throw them into a system that's uncomfortable. Throw them into it. He said, bind them. Bind their productivity. Tie their hands. Tie their capacity to go forward and throw them. Was it not the hands of Samson that was tied? Every time the devil wants to ravage a people, he ties their hands. Listen now. Tie their hands. Tie their feet. Throw them into fire that was made seven times hotter. Increase the rent and she will change her mind. Increase the bills. He will renegotiate his passion for God. years ago, you vowed that I would serve him. And now he increases the heat. And you begin to negotiate it. I, I know that I came to you and you said I must sleep with you for the job. I said, God forbid, but now is that door still open? Because the pressure on me is said, tie their hands. Tie their feet. Throw them into fire. 21. The patients were almost there. These men were bound in their coats. Their hats, their garments, they were cast into the midst of the fire. 22. Kadabaranda. That this fire was so hot, the flames killed those who put them inside. Next verse. They were all within 24. Then the king was astonished and he rose up and spake and said, Did we not cast three men bound into this system? They answered, Yes, O king, it is true. However, 25, I see four men. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Keep this scripture. But Isaiah 43 and verse 1 and 2 says, Fear not, I have redeemed you. It says, I have called you by name, you are mine. It says, when you walk through the waters, it will not destroy you. Through the river, it will not drown you. It says, when you walk through fire, I will be with you. 26, we are ready to touch and we are done. Nebuchadnezzar came to the mouth of the furnace and spake. And this is what he said. Pastor Felix, Mama Felix, house of treasures, ye servants of the Most High, come forth, come hither. And they came out in the midst of the fire. 27. This miracle happened in the presence of the princes the governors and everybody he says watch this i want to show you something he says being gathered together he saw this man whose bodies the fire had no power he saw men whose business the fire 
had no power. He saw ministries whose, whose bodies, the fire, had no power. Verse 28. Blessed be the name of the Lord. It says, And Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who had sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him, and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve or worship any god except their own god. As a result, this is all God is looking for. Not your money, not your business. I make a decree that every people, nation, language, which speak anything against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces, their houses, etc., etc. That's it. Then the king <laughs> then Babylon, then South Africa promoted Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in hell, but even as thy soul, sit down. Please look up. Please listen to me. We're going to pray. There are many people on earth who have transacted this kind of business. The business is always transacted in a lonely place where you are given the world. I can know, even though I was not there, because when I see you rising, I don't look at what is empowering you, I look at your soul. Listen, it is impossible under this system to prosper even as thy soul prospers. No, no. I know you are prospering the Antichrist way. When you suddenly get a promotion and there's no longer time for prayer, watch this, sit down. Let me show you how it works. Suddenly branches have been opened. Your name is everywhere. It is not that an occultic person has to come directly. It's the system. It strangles your spiritual life and allows other things grow. That's how you know you are fraternizing with Babylon. And you say, when I had five members, I could pray, I could fast. But now, God, I don't have time. I need to catch a flight. I need to travel around the world. There is a demand on my ministry. And heaven watches. You are prospering at the expense of your soul. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Lord, I loved you until that relationship came. I, I, I'm too committed to this guy. I, I can't give you 30 minutes, one hour. Lord, you, you know how relationship is in our generation. I, I am desperate for marriage. I'm desperate for growth. Please, can your presence wait for me? When I need an emergency, I will come to you. So, under this system, God becomes a ladder that we use to get money. A ladder we use to get fame. A ladder we use to get anointing. It is fraternity with Babylon. Are we together? I pledge allegiance to the land with all my heart, with all I am. I will speak. To honor his commands, I pledge allegiance to the Lord. If 
if it's not in your presence, if it's not by your hand, if it's not by your spirit, don't let me have it. For everything I need is in you. If it's not in your presence, I'm not that desperate. If it's not by your hands, if it's not by your spirit, don't let me have it. For everything I need is in you. What shall it profit a man? If your ministry is spreading around the world, dear man of God, and you are making a name and making the headlines, but I check your soul, and the last time you prayed was two months because you are busy preaching. Ministry can be an idol. Anointing can be an idol. Hear me. This is how we prosper. <laughs> Lord, bless me and see what I will do. God says, I don't need to bless you. I see already. You know, people, people disrespect money. People say, well, money cannot, if you are joking, money has real power. It can change men. Money can relocate you from the will of God into somewhere you have no business being. Money can introduce relationships into your life that help to sit on your soul while it dies. Hallelujah. See, let me tell you, when you are walking with God and God starts to deal with you, whether you understand what He's saying or not, believe it. You can be walking on God, increase me. And God looks at you and says, there is lust in your heart. You say, me? God forbid. God, you are talking like that because you don't have a car yet. Of course, who will come to you in that state? And so God is saying, before you disappoint yourself, trust my all in eye. I hope you like what I'm sharing tonight. I show you there are people who may not be featured in the move of God in the days that come. And I don't mean this in a sarcastic way. John 2, the old wine has finished. We were in the feast and the wine finished. Yet the business still looks like it is growing. Yet ministry is still expanding, but the wine. But there were a group of people in that place. They said, something is wrong with this formation. Where is the Lord of the feast? He has been thrown somewhere in the congregation while we received the praises. And they came to Jesus and said, we know something is wrong with this formation. The wine has finished. Let me show you something. This is prophetic and then we'll pray. Revelation chapter 18. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm about to pray. I just saw a wind. There are two people, the power of God is coming on them with a loud shout. Please bring them out. I just saw a wind. Just blowing this way. It's a very strong impartation. It's coming on two of them. Please bring them. Don't let me have it. Revelation 18. Everything I need is in you. Verse 2. Please look up. We're about to pray. Your pastor told you your life would not be the same. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon, the great, 
it all. This is a prophetic word to the body of Christ. It's a prophetic word to the church. It's not a word of condemnation. It is the announcing of the new season. Because the jealousy of the bridegroom is drawing him closer. Watch this. Babylon the great is fallen. Is fallen and is become the habitations of devils. And the hold of every foul spirit. And a cage of every unclean bird. Next verse. For the nations, watch this, have drunk the wine of a fornication. Watch this. It says the kings of the earth have done what? Committed fornication with her. Who is her? Babylon. And the merchants, the rich men of the earth, they worked rich through the abundance of her delicacy. That this is the source of the mysterious risings. In spite of the fact that they disobey the laws of the kingdom, there is a fraternity in the realm of the spirit that is greater than buying and selling. Next verse. I heard another voice from heaven saying, South Africa, come out of her. Come out. Come out, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not her plagues. Five, for her sins have reached the heavens, and God had remembered her iniquities. Verse six. Let's go to verse eight. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly born with fire. For strong is the Lord who judges her. Nine. Verse 9. Now, the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning. Verse 10. Seeing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city, that mighty city, how soon will it fall? In one hour. Shadows. In one hour. Next verse. There's something I want to show you. The merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her. For no man buy yet of her merchandise anymore. A day will come, the spirit of revival will stop men, will say no. This can't be it. God is so much bigger than it. Verse 12. Now, look up. This is what this businesswoman called Babylon sells. We are examining all her products. Look at what she sells. Ready? She sells gold. That's where Nebuchadnezzar got it from. She sells silver. She sells precious stones. She sells pearl, fine linen, purple, silk. All manner of ivory, most precious wood, brass, iron, marble, thirteen, cinnamon, odors. She sells anointing. She sells frankincense. She sells wine. She sells oil. She sells flour. Read with me now. And wheat, aha, uh -huh, and beef, South Africa, and sheep, and horses. What does she sell again? And chariots, and slaves, and. She sells even souls. So if I want influence, I can come to her and say, Give me fame. And she will give you the souls of men. And men will flock after you. I come with a voice of prophecy. The Bible says, blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound, if you did not hear it, it's because you are not in Zion. Please listen to me. There is a system 
that is eating into our children. It is into structures. Satan's agenda is that one day there will rise a generation that can no longer call upon the name of the Lord. The Bible says, and Adam knew his wife, and she bore Seth, and men began again to call upon the name of the Lord. Listen, the heritage of Africa was built upon the blood of many who served God with life. They were not as educated. They were not as enlightened. They did not even have depth of revelation like we do. But one thing they had was their allegiance of bending in life and in death. Africa, wake up. We are about losing a heritage. It may not be in our lifetime, but so that we don't transcend this realm with pain. Where is the God of our Father that your child one day will say, Who is Jesus? Why do I need Him? I'm already blessed. Because you taught Him that everything about Jesus is just to give you money. And now that I have money without Him, why do I need Him? Please listen to me. I show you a key. That will make you lay gold as dust. Is it not a law in this kingdom that we keep things by releasing them? Hear me. I believe in this place tonight. The hand of God is coming on someone here. I just saw the angel of the Lord. Just move here. Please bring them out. Thank you. Step into a new season. Please bring them out. Hallelujah You have won the victory Hallelujah Hallelujah Bring them up You have won it all for me Death could not hold Brothers and sisters, tonight's teaching is not a call to tear down people. Tonight's teaching is not for you to start pointing your hands. No, no, that's not how the spirit of the Christ works. Tonight's teaching is not a tell them teaching. Tonight's teaching is a call to come out of her. A call to see the excellency of the prosperity of your soul. Listen. I can know who prospered you by checking the health of your soul. When I find out that the higher you rise, the more your need touches the ground. I know you have met His Majesty. When I see that the more an appointment comes, the more your hunger, the more your desperation. Madam, I don't know who this woman is. We are not praying tonight. But in the name of Jesus, I'm seeing oil being poured on your head. And the Lord is saying, I should tell you, He's shifting you to a new level in the spirit. I release that grace upon you. Step into a new level now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen. Listen. Please let me announce to you. Not everyone has bowed to bear. There are people who their hunger and their passion has driven them to realms of power, realms of grace, authentic dimensions of power. I'm desperate for you. Yeah. 
I'm lost without you. That's the anthem of a generation. Listen. South Africa, house of treasures. Your pastor discerning by the spirit put forth this meeting as a clarion call to wake the army of the Lord Jesus. To let them know that there is a fraternity that is going on in the earth. Babylon. Please take it hard for me. And let him... My dear friend from US, somewhere in this meeting, you are going to blow this tougher for us. It's going to come by the Spirit. We will shake this building as a sound that was tending to South Africa. That there is a rising of the new. There is a rising of men mighty and strong in the Spirit. Another kind of man. Listen. I vowed and I told the Lord, even before He began to lift me, Lord, whatever will take my attention from you, I don't care what it is, let it go fast. And as I'm standing here, God beats my heart that I'm telling Him, what is fame? Listen, we have to be very careful. Some of these mundane things can distract us to a point where we will lose authentic power. The grave over territories, not just churches, not just cities. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. You become a ruler over territories. An anointing is coming on you, this dear lady. In the name of Jesus, the Lord is shifting you. I don't know who you are, but you are stepping into a new dimension in the realm of the Spirit. Listen, your life will never, believe me when I tell you, you will encounter a grace that will so shift you to dimensions in the Spirit. Listen, my message tonight is very simple. We are going to discuss other aspects of the kingdom. This is not all. But tonight, in addition to the graces and the teachings, it is a call to return. It is a call. Leave the issue of business now. Leave the issue of I want speed. It will come. Tonight is you. You are the commodity yourself. Man of God, forget about ministry and focus on his presence. That's the key to growth. The key to running is staying. Apostle, I want power. I want growth. I want to prophesy. I know you are sincere. But that drive will only lead you to perdition. In the beginning, God. In the beginning, God. In the beginning of your business, God. Not money. In the beginning of ministry, God. In the beginning of marriage, God. He is called Alpha Omega. Listen, that any relationship in my life that is strangling the health of my soul is too expensive. It's not worth it. There's no such thing as we were born together. No, sir. You don't have to condemn people and insult people and cause trouble. But it's time. He says, when Elijah called all of them, he called the prophets of Baal. He says, if God be God, let him be God. If Baal be God, let him be God. And then he says, choose you this day somewhere in scripture whom you will serve. Man of God, choose you this day. Businessman, choose you this day. My dear precious sister, my dear precious brother, choose you this day. As for me, I've made my choice that we live for His Majesty. I love Him more than preaching. Believe me when I tell you, I love Him more than anointing, more than power. I will throw this ministry a thousand times to honor His presence. If He tells me this is my last sermon as a preacher, 
I stand before the God of heaven as I close this Bible. I will never open it to preach again. That's how much I love him. Simon Bajona, lovest thou me more than this? We're about to cry in this place. Listen. Tonight is not a night of, I am an apostle. I am a prophet. Tonight is a night where we will come and say, Lord, I'm tired of lying. Search my heart. It's not a call to condemnation. It's a call to intentional reflection. For if it is, listen, the glory of God comes to confirm that his patterns have been followed. When his patterns are violated like Cain, the sacrifice. So we are going to pray. I may not have the time. My friend, lift your hands. Step into a new level in the spirit. A grace is coming upon you. You are a young man, but in the name of Jesus, the Lord will use you mightily, even in this nation. He's calling us deeper, 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 deeper. He's calling us deeper, deeper. Salabaranda salatia sabas. Listen, in the next five minutes. Please forget about who is sitting by your left and right. You are going to cry before his majesty and say, Lord, touch my heart. I'm not here to lie. I'm not here to pretend. In all sincerity, I come before you, the God of my salvation. I come with my heart broken and contrite. That if there be any way and any pattern that negates your workings in my life, I come before for ask for a fortune and a cleansing that brings power. Now lift your voice and let's cry to the heavens. Selada sabanda prakato saladia, engrete kosta da barakoto siata sima hasia. Grace, grace. I'm hearing the name Grace. Who is that? Grace, grace. You're wearing like a green head tie, something green. You didn't tie your head completely. Who is that? Is there someone like that? What's your name, my dear? Grace. Where are you coming from? You are from. Please give her the mic. What, what do you have to do with um, Congo DRC? That's where, I'm from. where are you from? Congo. Congo. I want to pray for you because you are stepping into a new anointing. I stretch my hands. I bring you a grace that shifts you to a new level. May your life never be the same. Never be the same. Never be the same. You can know that you met him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now please hear me. I know that we don't have all the time tonight. But listen. Tomorrow and Friday. I want you to come with all your families. Even if it's for you to sit on the roof. Please find a way. I may not have the time tonight. To minister to the sick and all of that. But the Lord sent me here. To come and join hands with the mighty men and women of God. In this city and this nation. To lift up the banner of the name and the grace of the Christ to see to it that the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ hallelujah is there a place called is it Pumalanga something like that is, is that a name I 
I'm sorry if I don't pronounce it correctly. Pumalanga. That was that a nation is set. Who is from there? Hold on, please. That person, there are two of them. The power of God will come on them now. Bring them from that region. That region. Bring them. Please bring them we're around you know. We're from the east. Listen, this is a ministry of signs and wonders. God, it, it is not I'm a man. Look at me. Please look at me. I am a man. We are only men who have been helped by God. And the Lord uses us like this not to show that we are superhuman in ourselves. Our divinity and the extraordinary manifestation is a testament of the ministry of the Holy Spirit. It should cause men to see Him more than seeing us. This is how it works. And I, the Bible says, if I be lifted from the earth, I will draw all men to myself. I will draw all men to myself. I will draw all men to myself. Hallelujah. One of these ladies wearing hat in front. The power of God is coming on one of them. Please let me have these ladies in front. I just got wind. Listen. If you are a pastor here, believe me, you are going to contact a grace in this conference that will so shift your ministry to a dimension of grace and power. It is by the Spirit of God. Listen, listen, please look at me. My teaching tonight may be a bit hard, but this is the chastening of the Spirit. It prunes us to bring us to a place of order. The apostolic thing, the apostolic anointing is not even a preaching anointing, it's a governmental grace. It governs the coordinates of the truths of scripture it ensures that a territory and a generation works within the jurisdiction of balance the assignment of the apostolic and the prophetic is that through the sacrifice of alignment we access the speakings of god as a portion for a generation and ensure that its dispensing is done with accuracy and as intended by the father Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Now please hear me. That when you go back home tonight, let it be a cry in your heart. And say, Lord, I join the midwives that will birth the new in South Africa. But hear me. South Africa, I bring you a prophetic word. Before you believe a man, find out about him. Don't just believe carelessly. Listen. I was sleeping after we were done having breakfast and I saw a vision. I saw a vision of a woman about to give birth. And that woman is South Africa. Hear me. There is, and this will start from the month of August this year. There is a strange shift that is coming to the body of Christ within this territory. Please hear what I am telling you. It's a double-edged sword. It will come both to lift, but to bring down. It is not the desire of God that anything goes wrong. Listen, don't celebrate when things go wrong with the body of Christ. The goal is the body of Christ lifted. So you must understand what I'm teaching you. Are we together now? It is true that we are at different levels. It is true that our levels of sacrifices and alignment is true that here and there flesh may be prevalent in people. But hear me, Christ is still in the midst of South Africa. And let me speak to you. More than pointing fingers, we must now begin to point our attention to His Majesty. Because as we behold Him, that's where we are changed. 
Hallelujah. Can we pray two prayer points and we're done for tonight? Prayer point number one. Lord, find a vessel in me. A vessel. It's true that God is prospering us. But tonight's teaching is even as your soul prospers. Father, I, repentance is not a language for sinners. Listen. The word repent is not necessarily a sinner's language. Repent is a pattern. It is the system by which we become more like Christ. Paul prayed and said, My little children of whom I travail, on I be formed. The formation of the Christ have a mystery called repentance. When to live one pray, say, Lord, search my heart and help me. I desire to walk genuinely with you in truth. Lift your voice and pray. Genuinely. Genuinely. Yes, sir. Now, please just let me five minutes and we're done. My dear friend from the US is just going to play something. Just play this song. And as he's playing, I'd like you to pray. And while we pray, I'm just going to speak over your life and we're done for tonight. Yes, sir. Lift your voice and make sure you pray. Lord, in this move of your spirit that is coming to South Africa, this financial renaissance, this apostolic and prophetic move of the spirit, I open up my heart and I declare that I am available and I am usable. Let there be a restoration of the prayer fire upon our altars. Let there be a restoration of hunger and passion for God upon our altars. Let there be a restoration of a determination to live for Him. A determination to be reflectors of His glory and power and grace. We will not bow. Here comes the generation that will not bow to Baal. Here comes the generation that is uncompromising. Here comes the generation that will stay to the end. Here comes the generation that will last to the end. Hallelujah. Now please hear me. I know that our time is gone, but I must pray one prayer. The Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing in the realm of the spirit and I'm seeing several chains, several chains on people. This is what I see. Just one prayer I want to pray because it would be unfair for you to return back to that chain. No. What then is the excellency of his presence? Now the Lord is that spirit the Bible says. You are about to taste and see that the Lord is good. Not only to believe. I want to pray a prayer for you. Now listen please. As I pray this prayer, the power of the Holy Ghost, please help that lady. The power of the Holy Ghost will come upon some of you and it is to break chains. This is not impartation. This is to break chains so that you are free. Hallelujah. Help them please. I want to pray. Listen, you will never be the same. Never. At the count of three, I want you to shout that name Jesus. And as you shout that name, many of you, age long captivity that has seen every challenge is at the mercy of the grace that confronts it. Please listen to me. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I come to you, South Africa, by the rod of a higher priesthood. And I stand in the name of Jesus in partnership with all the graces in this place. I declare at the count of three that every force that is not. Thank you for watching our entire video today. If you feel you can bless someone, please join us and spread the gospel by sharing this video on your social media.